Okay. Well, let's actually let's actually get into this episode, even though on my notes it says 181. That is incorrect. This is episode 182. I just changed it. Now we can actually begin episode 182 of the Current Gen Podcast. My name is Tim. I'm here with Jeff. Hey, yo. I'm here with Derek. Hello. Kyle. Hey. Dan. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Very good. Everyone, you did a good job. Good Kyle's hey is always the best one to me. It's just... <laughs> Hey, hey, <laughs> yeah, I'm here. I'm here every time that you say my name. I don't know why I have to say hey, but uh, present. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I'm here. OK, fine. I'm here. Uh, there's some new games that came out this week. We want to talk about those. There's uh, also some notable stuff maybe for us to recap a little bit from Gamescom. A few things were talked about there. So we'll just jump right into it. Um, to me, the most notable couple of games are going to be Armored Core 6 and Immortals of Avium. So let's talk with the latest from from Soft. And that's Armored Core 6, Fires of Rubicon. I know at least three of you purchased it. Maybe four of you purchased it. At least three of you I did. Bought right? it. Derek, Kyle, and Dan all have it. Okay, D- Jeff did not. I have not no. purchased it yet. No. Um, Kyle, did you get any time with it yet? I did. I got a lot of time with it, yeah. You did? Well, what do you mm. think so far? Uh, it's very hard. Wow. <laughs> they weren't <laughs> they weren't kidding about that stuff. Uh I thought the first boss was like really. I it to me it felt like the very first boss you fight like in a uh, Demon Souls game or Dark Souls game, and you're like, hey, you're supposed to die at this one, and it'll just continue. Mm-hmm. But when you die, it just makes you restart again because you're supposed to beat him. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> I actually I saw. I watched to... a tutorial on that on because that's the technically a tutorial <laughs> boss. It's and, a tutorial, and, boss, and that's literally yeah. what the tutorial guy, <laughs> the the video guy said was like, usually you just die because you're supposed to. But this time you, no, you literally this game you have really to wants yeah. you to beat that boss. <laughs> yeah. and I did. It took me like four or five tries, uh, but I got him. It was yeah. hard. Uh, this is really hard. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but like in between all these big boss fights are, are are these like quick little like missions where you're like blowing up, you know, uh, you know things or or killing uh, teams of robots or takes and stuff like that. Uh, and that stuff's pretty easy and fun and just uh experiencing like the speed of everything especially if you make a, a quick you know armored core it just feels really good and and uh it's very simple all the controls are super simple everything makes sense you know uh your right triggers uh, control your right arm and your right shoulder stuff and your left triggers left arm light, uh, left uh, shoulder stuff and that can be missiles and guns and swords and all sorts of stuff so just depending on how you want to outfit stuff uh you know and depending on you want to go in and attack something uh, you got a lot of customization options, so um, I'm really enjoying it. I got all the way to the second boss, which is the big like rig boss that you keep on seeing like in all the playthroughs. Uh, and I thought oh, the that boss fight, one, like the one that's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought that boss fight was like, this is the year of good boss fights for me because after Remnant, I was blown away. But like that, this boss fight was so awesome. I thought it was just the spectacle of it all was so crazy, and it was it was hard. But I beat him first try, so it like really invigorated me into going, hey, maybe I can do this. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at in the game right now. Um, it's just a couple hours in, but I've, I've replayed a lot of the levels to get some extra money. Um, you know, it, the game, you know, you can make it easy for yourself. You just kind of sit there and grind for a little bit and get better weapons and better armor and stuff. So, um, I'm really enjoying it so far. And I thought it was going to be like, re- I thought it was really going to scare me away after that first boss. I, I, it was one of those times where like I beat it and when, you know, everyone feels good usually after they beat a, a dark souls boss or a really hard boss, I just kind of feel like, Oh, thank God that's over. So I don't ever <laughs> get that serotonin, you know, drop mm. or whatever. Uh, but I did from the second boss. I just thought there was a lot of, I just thought it was, it was equal part spectacle hard. And I don't know, made you feel kind of powerful and, and, uh, and kept you on your toes at the same time. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm at with the game right now. Uh, Derek or Dan, how, how have y'all been enjoying it? I'll let Dan talk. I, I don't have much to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> have you, are you just, are you not enjoying it? Or you just haven't had the time to play much of it. I, I played up till the first boss. I fought him twice and I was like, no, man, I don't no. <laughs> no, no, I, 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 no man no man i've got no, Gate. Gate. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not doing this baldur's no. gate isn't really giving you the same walls that are like uh the same well, boss wait, the whole wait time till i talk talk about baldur's gate there's yeah. also yeah. like right. horns lady sex in baldur's gate so you know yeah true you know or bear sex you know whatever kind of sex you want to have so sure um, you, you know what sex. i've actually not gotten laid once yet I hear like you almost have to try not to get laid to not get laid in this game. (laughs) I have successfully not gotten laid. 
<laughs> like, uh, yeah, someone explained it like where Mass Effect, you're trying to follow a guide to make sure you get somebody. In this game, you just kind of fall into <laughs> relationships, apparently. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Gail's in love with me, and so mm. clearly he wants me, but I guess he's like a beta male because he keeps telling me he loves me, and I'm like, all right, let's bang, and he's just like... <laughs> Not right now. I'm not Dude, ready. I'm not the ready. Setting's not correct or something. Wow. Like, right. Are you are you in love with me or are you friend zoning me? I don't know. What He's you're like doing. that's DLC content. Come back mix, later. Mixed signal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dan, what about uh, Armored Core? Any um, romantic scenes in that one so far? I I did try to grind up against some ACs as they abbreviate them, um, yeah. but I died when I tried to do that. I died, so I, you okay. can't you can't Fair grind enough. up with. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I I actually kind of think it's funny all these people that didn't like i guess research the game which you know i i respect some people just don't want to research things that much they'll watch like a trailer and then yeah. like that looks cool i'll go play it but like i i going through twitter definitely seeing people like oh i was a couple hours in and i just like returned the game because i thought it was going to be a souls game and it's like all right guys come on like you know like i get it's from soft it's the number six like, of a franchise that's well yeah. known it's probably like the other five or the other third really there's like 30 entries or 16 i don't know there's a lot of entries in this yeah. series so. well there's there's five and then there was like what four answer which i think was beef i think it was after four like there's four and then there's four answer so I think there was like, yeah, this, they didn't this call is a, the fourth one armored armored four, did they? Because that would have been no, no, they it. did not. They put, That's they a put missed the opportunity. What a waste. Yeah. Um, it's like Transformers without the four in the middle of the. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely like Kyle said, it's definitely a difficult, a difficult game, but it is not like a Souls game, obviously. Um, very different, very different setting. Um, what you're playing at is incredibly different. A lot of customization, I guess you could say, kind of like with. Elden Ring, you know, trying to figure out different builds and stuff, yeah. which is fun. Um, fair, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, but like the structure, on... the gameplay loop is not Souls like, right? That's what no, I was it's, it's, like. it's stage based, you know? It's, yeah, and, mission and, based, stage based. Yeah, not, and, and the missions are what, 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 what would you say, Dan, like anywhere from like five to ten minutes? Like they're not very long either. Yeah, it's they're, they're, bite they're, size, they're, they're kind of bite, yeah. which is fun. It actually, I don't know why my head just went to like Dio Field when I was thinking about that, because like oh. those are very snappy, quick, like, That's you know, actually a pretty good comparison, I'd say. Yeah, um, yeah so kind of like, in, yeah, some of them are just like a few minutes and then like I'm on I'm on the mission <laughs> that's going to conclude the first chapter at the moment. Um and I'm maybe like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes into that because I'm fighting like a maybe the mid boss or whatever. I so. hear the boss of the last, of this chapter is pretty tough. So, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of a jerk. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, the uh, yeah, like you said, that first boss was really tough. Um, the gameplay is quite different. I mean, you're you're jetting around as a mech. It's not the same as being a person on foot rolling around, whether you have light armor or not, you know? So you're having to take that into consideration. And your builds are very important because um, you can have a lightweight mech, uh, a, a mid-range mech, a heavy mech, like, you know what I mean? Um, and and like you said, with the equipment that you have on, that's all customizable. You have, you have like, internal stuff that you can equip so you can have um, – uh, you can carry more – more heavier things like a bigger load um <laughs> there you go thank you uh, there it is. so so there's kind of like other pieces of equipment that you can buy internally to be like oh your your you know your ac can carry more stuff um and i think that's really fun i think that's very enjoyable but it kind of like being like well i i like the heavier heavier style with like the bigger guns but i was fighting what was there was the I, th I think it was the second boss maybe it was the boss you were talking about is it the one that has like the shield in front of it kyle um because I, I thought I, that was the second boss no well is that just the ac where you're just fighting the other ac no it, it was like a tank that had like almost like a shield thing in front of it i don't know the second boss i fought was like the big rig is what i thought the one that was on, on the big with the, with the big rig. legs yeah yeah okay all right so then maybe that maybe that's a boss and then i'm talking about the third boss then so okay yeah um but yeah this this thing was like it, it's like a big tank right but like it's moving around pretty quickly and it's it's basically it's basically spinning around a lot even though it looks like a very big heavy thing that shouldn't be moving as as well as it is it's it's spinning around a lot you have a you have a little bit of help in the first half of it and then and then you don't in the second half and i was having a lot of difficulty because my mech i would say overall is like mid-range um, so it's not too heavy, but it's not too fast. That's so I just I'm wasn't at, yeah. I wasn't getting a lot of like of the speed to maneuver around him. I eventually I basically just like power through it. I just managed to like land the right hits at the right moment to defeat it. But it's um, it's definitely a game that 
if you want to get into the minutia of it and and really like buy a lot of the parts and and tinker around with you know the 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 builds and so on and so forth if you want something that's faster because it seems like you need to move around faster with whatever you're fighting then that option is available to you and you can yeah, save those too so you can switch between yeah. them like you yeah. can save your loadouts so, and have a whole bunch of different mechs like ready for whatever occasion that yeah. you need um and yeah and i hear that playing around like if you're if you're stuck on a boss maybe approach it completely differently like yeah maybe put all the extra armor on maybe put all the extra missiles on you know and just go in there and just tank it up um so i haven't i haven't hit that wall quite yet except for that first boss which i thought was just ludicrous for a tutorial boss um (laughs) but boy yeah it really sets the stage and people you know who it was a reminder for me like oh yeah this series has always been hard too so you know it's, it's always been a tough series and um it's still honoring that uh i would say in a big way um and the story's there like you're actually telling like a coherent you know like story it's not like a bunch of people like talking in riddles at you uh for you know 40 hours (laughs) it's basically (laughs) there's um there's like a resource on a planet that it was very coveted but then some shit happened right so now there's like Things have kind of been kind of decimated, but they're trying to go back and maybe like get some of the resource again. But there's go all back. these factions. Yeah. You gotta go. You gotta go back. And uh, you're, and, you're and a mercenary. And by the way, when I said blasphemous, I, I, when I said blasphemous about uh, your story comment, I meant the game blasphemous, not that your comments were <laughs> blasphemous towards from soft. Because blasphemous is full of riddles, and you're like, I don't understand any of the skip, and you just go to the gameplay. Like it makes no mm-hmm. sense. Anyway, sorry. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I like the setting too. Kyle, I don't know. I don't know if you had this in pop into your head, but, um, all the, all those kind of like metal, like decrepit structures in the air, did that kind of give you almost like matrix flash, but like thinking of matrix a little bit of like the machine cities? Well, I, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, I can see what you're saying. Yeah, there, there's there's some really interesting, you know, dystopian uh, yeah. like, uh, imagery here, you know, because yeah. this is like a mining planet. It's kind of desolate or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm just I'm really enjoying it. I, the whole thing is a really good vibe. And uh, they they said embers of fire like immediately. And I'm like, man, that, that's a term that they just have to use in every single one of their games. Yeah. Or the embers are burning in the flame or some, yep. you know, some kind of dark soul. They, yeah. they got to say it every time. Uh, yeah. So they got that out of the way, like in the opening cutscene. Well, uh, apparently they cool. have like the moon sword or whatever in this game, which is oh, in all yeah, of their Yeah, the legendary Souls weapon game. that's been like in every mm-hmm. yeah armor core. Oh, yeah, very, that's very cool. That's well, it's been in every honoring, Dark Souls. They're honoring right? long. Ring. Say, yeah, yeah, it was okay, in Bloodborne, yeah. Dark Souls, the moon, <laughs> whatever. I forgot what it is. I use it. It somewhere. came from the moon. Um, it has yeah, a master sword type of thing where it can launch out projectiles from it. Um, that's cool. Mm-hmm. I need to find this. I, I just looked it up. Don't know how accurate this is. It looks like only a very few people have logged it on how long to beat, but it's in the 15 to 20 hour range of the few that oh, are. I think, I think the That's dev said 15. Uh, right. Reviews were saying 15. Yeah, Dang. that sounds right. Some are cool. saying 14 and a half, but like if you want to do, let's assume you do a few side things as well, you're probably looking at 15 to 20. Well, everything about this game feels like, uh, you know, d- trickiness. Let's call it trickiness and combat aside. Feels mm-hmm. like the antithesis of Elden Ring, like completely different than Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. completely linear, short yeah, bursts. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. like yeah, of, very, of yeah, right, yeah. right, right, absolutely. A completely different game design and philosophy. But, right. um, absolutely similar energy with boss fights, right? Because I mean, you're having to. I mean, with that Elden Ring, the boss, yeah, or the Souls games, like it's more learning patterns. I think here yeah. is just kind of like it's almost like uh, it almost almost leans a little bit like Devil May Cry in that style, where it's like fast and you're kind of having oh, to twitch response, twitch response type of yeah. stuff. But like also yeah. like what you're using at your disposal is incredibly important too. So oh, right. yeah, yeah, uh, but just it just even like accidentally like boosting when you're not supposed to, it could totally yeah. screw you out of being able to yeah. dodge like the next thing you need <laughs> right. to dodge. So it's like. There, it, the everything is really easy to like, use, like mechanically or control, but like it's oh, it's good. everything's pre- like everything that you do matters. You know, you don't yeah. want to do something because it will leave you open for an attack. That's the or main something. thing that would make me end up getting a game that I would probably end up quitting anyway is <laughs> how fluid and like fast the combat looks. Like how responsive yeah, it looks great. Yes. Thirty minutes in and you're out, dude. Yeah. That that first boss is so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, speaking you, of, that would I'm telling you, like I, I was so frustrated. I was like, yeah. and I, yeah. I even said, I was like, I I'm saw some one more time. I saw some <laughs> tutorials that were like, you have to, you have no choice.
choice but to go. Well, like I, I you kept, have to looking, go up I kept looking at the. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Use that. your sword on that guy. When I do that, you know, like yeah. yeah so it's I don't know. I don't know if it was, was happening to you, yeah. Kyle, but I kept looking the damn thing straight in, straight in the face. I guess I mean it's like a helicopter type of plane yeah. thing, yeah. but like. And it was like going left. If I'm looking at it, it was going left. But shit was coming from the right side. I was like, where the hell is this even coming from? Yeah, I don't know if it was, was like, like shooting like in pincer. That's called uh, uh, from soft bullshit difficulty. That's what that <laughs> yes, is. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. It's, it's bullshit just coming it's from It's just the nothing side. coming from nowhere. Uh, just like, it's hard like, now. It's hard now. Yeah, I think I, I think I realized once I was like, let me be a little smarter about how I use cover. So I was actually like using cover, oh, which yeah. Same. I stayed behind like this little bunker pretty much the yeah, entire yeah. fight on well, my last time. Some of that and like jetting around it was was helping. So I think once I took that into consideration, instead of just being out in the open. Um, yeah, I remember I, that first that first attempt, though, when he killed me and I saw how little I took off his health, I go. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> nope. You guys nope. mentioned nope. that it's fast and fluid. So speaking of how it looks, like overall visuals and also like audio and music and all that stuff, how oh, is it? All that stuff is awesome. And it's a beautiful game. There's a moment like where you're shooting off a, like a catapult or whatever that kind of makes your guy go a little faster. And just like the speed and anytime you boost and it does that Gundam wing like yeah. and you go a little faster. I don't know how Things to describe that. Blurred. That's Things cool. Yeah, but it, it goes a little extra blur and stuff like that. Like all that That's looks random. so cool and it feels like I haven't had any sort of like slowdown or anything like that in frames even though I'm not maybe the guy to talk about that. Oh, yeah. so. But the the iPad the the giant sort of four-legged structure thing that you were talking about like that whole desert like that whole moment is super cool because it's it, all like in a sandstorm too and like man there's yeah. just so much going on the screen like a, 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 it's it's impressive the way that this game performs yeah. uh and the, the scale is awesome like oh, the, the, the scale is amazing yeah we're a big mech thing but like this thing is ginormous yeah like, it's, it's interesting because like when you're standing like next to like buildings you're as tall as buildings you know right. but like now right. when you're starting to fight like other bigger mechs like <laughs> i mean this thing is like the size of a country almost like it's it's so yeah. insanely big like yeah basically. the scope yeah. of the enemies in the trailers has been like holy crap that looks awesome like how yeah big those yeah yeah boss so. are they yeah. did it, guys. They made another one. They made another, another, <laughs> another game. game to be jealous that I'll never play. <laughs> <laughs> like Elden Ring. Hey. Yeah. And there is no difficulty levels. So. <laughs> no, there's no easy mode. You know, man. They just don't do it. There's no story focused mode. mode for this game, is what you're saying. That's no, no. There's no story focused Hey, mode. there is in Sea of Stars. And when I saw that in the demo, I was like, oh. Yay! Like I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. put equip uh-huh. it immediately, but uh, that's good to know at least. You know? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that game's gonna be a breeze. It's gonna be so fun. It is. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk a little bit about uh, the latest game from EA, Immortals of Avium. Got bumped back from July for some extra time for polish and whatever else they wanted to do to it, and it's now out. This is one of the games. There's been a few of them like this this year that the the spectrum of reviews is just, I think they've hit every number and every, yeah. every statement. I feel like every statement about a game has been made about this game. Like everything <laughs> from it's good, it's bad, it's awful, it's fine, <laughs> it's mediocre, it's the best, it's the worst. Like, I feel like everything's been said. Yeah, so, it's so this weird. is a really, this is a really interesting one. I know that uh, Derek got this one and tried it out a bit. Um, yeah. And Jeff, you've been playing it as well. So yeah. feel free to take it away. What do you guys think of Immortals of Avium so far? This is one that I'm going to get on sale probably later this fall. Same. I fully totally plan on playing it, but I know well, it's, it's an EA game. It's going to be on sale by the time we get to holiday for sure. Absolutely, for sure. it will be. I can guarantee that actually. Uh, yeah. for maybe in a few weeks. Uh, who knows? <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> um, but Derek, I'm curious where you, I assume you stopped to switch back to Baldur's Gate at some point, yeah. right? How far did you get in? I played past the tutorial so like yeah uh, i guess like the you know i don't want to spoil it but you lose somebody is what i would say and then right. you kind of you go through a tutorial well it literally is a tutorial of like five years later and you have all these magic powers and stuff like that so yeah. that's where i where i am so i yeah um, i just ended today at the same exact spot that's that's the first two chapters right there the first chapter is like yeah. Your background is like a street rat. Uh, what's that? Or whatever the words are from Aladdin. <laughs> but he's like a street rat on this you. on this whole town that's <laughs> built on a bridge, which is such a cool visual of like this town of like they built like houses that don't look that stable on a bridge on the side of a bridge because that's the only safe place they could uh, get to away from the tyrant that's like destroying the entire world, basically. Um but yeah, some things happen in that first chapter that lead to you, you know, eventually becoming the guy that they've advertised in the trailers of the game where you're uh, equipping magic and working different spells. And dude, 
the combat feels so much better than I thought it would. Like, I mean, that's the main thing. It's like I really that's thought good. it. I really thought it would feel like this double A effort where I'm like, well, their heart's in the right place, so you know, I gotta <laughs> give them some credit <laughs> for trying. To, but it feels so easy to toggle between. There's ma- three main magic styles that you get at the beginning, and they're all just named after colors. It's like red, blue, green. Uh, but it's like it's just a press of a button and it's so responsive and um, and it plays just like a first person shooter. So uh, one of them's like a turret type of uh, attack. One's like more of explosive one, like a shotgun. Uh, that's more for closer range damage. And another is just a standard mid range, which okay. is the blue. Uh, and then the right. Uh, I'm sorry, the left hand, uh, the left hand has a shield option. Um, and I'm sure you unlock more stuff. You can do the left hand along the way, like specials. But I obviously we're, both Derek and I are very early in the game. Um so the but gameplay yeah, trailers just, looked like the you could almost parry if you time the block right or something. Did they talk about that uh, yet? Or is I that just the way it looked? Yet. Maybe I didn't okay. see that yet. In the, but I'm sure there's more unlockable uh, actions you could do nice. as you go along. But you like unlock the first special you unlock is like this big, it's like this giant shield or whatever. It's like a I don't know you what is it? I, I don't even know how to describe it. But you like pound the ground and a bunch of rocks go flying towards the an AOE attack. Okay, so yeah, it's that type yeah. of thing. Um, I don't even know. There's actually know like a it. lot. Like when you go through the tutorial, you unlock yeah. a lot. Like that's yeah. all they do. Is there's like, hey, you now have this. Grab this. You now have this ability, and then you use yeah. it, and you just unlock this ability, and then you unlock this. And I was like, dang, this is a lot. But at least they have you yeah. use it every time. Mm. Um, my like so again, I'm I'm early, but here's my thing. I I've said this plenty of times on the show. Like, whatever level of hype you go into it or i should say expectations usually generally that's where you leave yourself vulnerable for like let down and stuff like that this is not a game where i went into it going this is gonna be amazing like <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I went into it going this is probably a double a game trying to be advertised as triple a i gotta say i was actually blown away by presentation the graphics the gameplay the voice acting. It looks you know, expensive. It looks yeah. like everything an expensive game, man. feels and looks AAA. Now, how it plays out, I've heard like the big like I think general consensus on most reviews is that the story and the characters aren't that great. So okay, so maybe they failed trying to do something great and they weren't able to do it. But I'm you sure, can't yeah. sit there and play this game and go, this feels like. For instance, I I was excited for. Um, atlas fallen now i knew that was never going to be triple a but i yeah. thought this would be more aligned with atlas fallen they're not <laughs> like they're, they're not even close like atlas yeah. fallen feels double a it looks double a it talks like it's double a oh my god this doesn't yes. at all this is like hey we're we might be old school in how we play and things like that uh but this everything else is new new technology and like my my first 30 minutes with the game was going why the hell can my high-end pc not handle this at max levels so first of all i've been playing a lot of games in 8k i've been playing Baldur's gate in 8k all these games in 8k so i've already talked about this before my pc can do 8k and when i say 8k i'm not talking about native 8k well it can do native 8k but i'm playing using dlss okay so I can do native 4K being pushed up to 8K, which is essentially what DLSS is. I put this game on, and I was like, oh, let's try it on 8K. It immediately said, nope, don't even try. You don't have a shot. Your rig is shit. And I was like, okay, let me drop it to 4K. So I drop it to 4K, and I'm like, well, I should still be able to do, like, high, like, max it out and all that stuff. And it was like, nope. You have a terrible CPU, which I don't. I have a really well, good CPU. The settings of that game need to chill out a little bit. Then. I, well, I've heard that, that, the, that, you know, the settings that, tell you. <laughs> the settings tell you. They, they give you, like, if you click down on something, it'll tell you what it's going to drop. It'll tell you if you're maxing out your GPU or your CPU. My GPU can handle 
everything. My CPU. Oh, gone. is it like Resident Evil where it shows? Yeah. Like all the, oh, it, I, it, I, it, I like, like Rockstar does that too with Red Dead. So Dude. my CPU is like, dude, you gotta, you gotta chill out. I can't handle this. But <laughs> so anyways, weird. after I like, uh, you know, updated my drivers and stuff like that, I did get it to work better. I was able to play it at 4K, but I was actually just blown away by like this game really is that detailed. Like you can yeah. tell why it. Because a lot of PC guys will just be like, it's not optimized correctly. No, go play the game and you'll immediately see this is next gen. There's a reason why they were like, we are only put, putting this out on PC, Series X, and PS5. This is clearly a next gen game. The level of detail and everything, like the when you first start and you're running around the city with your friend and all yeah. this stuff, I, I was like, am I playing Fable? This feels so magical. Like it just had this very fable uh, vibe to it. It, I, it had me hooked. So the only reason why I haven't played it more is not because the game sucks. It's simply because I'm committed to Boulder Gates three, um, and that's why I didn't give Armor Core six a lot. Yeah. It's not because the game sucks. I won't bash the game. I was like, oh, this feels good. I, it's pretty. And then I got to that boss, and I was like, just like Kyle, I was like, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use foul language because this is what I said. I was like, "Oh fuck you, dude! This is fucking bullshit." Like I literally took like five percent of your health. Yeah. Like this is fucking stupid. And I said, "I don't got time for you. I'm done with you." I so I, bro- I broke. I broke up with the game right away. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Bad first day. Yeah, bad first day. It's a bad first day. So, bad first day. <laughs> so it's like, it. It seems like it's a good game. It's not. It's a bad timing for me because of all the games. So. Oh, yeah. A lot that's kind of yeah. where Immortals There's a lot of falls. Games, yeah. It's going to slow down, though, so don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Immortals <laughs> is good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's totally going to slow down. Yeah. Uh, Immortals is good. It's just not good enough right now with everything that's coming out. You know, again, I'll talk about Boulder's Gate 3 later. But, like, Boulder's Gate 3 is my commitment. I'm committed to that, that girl. Um, <laughs> and then Starfield. I'm extremely excited for Starfield. Damn. So I don't really yes. have time for a lot of these games that I would consider <laughs> none of us do. <laughs> would definitely be really good if it was during like more of a lull. Like, hey, it came out in June maybe or July, but coming out in August, September, yeah. this is bad, bad time. And then our next lull is in like, I guess mid December, but Not even really. then, if Avatar After I hits saw its Avatar date, uh, the trailer, uh, uh, PC trailer, I was like, "Are you serious? This game is the most gorgeous game I've ever seen." <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that because I'm not doing Baldur's Gate, uh, Blabber's Blabber's Gut, or um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Armored. Obviously, I'm not getting Armored Core. Uh, I'm not playing those games right now, so I feel pretty confident in saying Immortals is going to be my main until Starfield comes out next week. For you got me. like five days, buddy. Well, let me tell you about Immortals, though. The coolest part is that everything's broken up into chapters. I got through the first two chapters in less than an hour. And yeah. I was able to check. I think the loadout is a good uh, website for this. Well, they'll tell you the chapter breakdown and how long each one can be. And it's 18 chapters. And this game feels so beatable to me, especially on an easy mode. Nice. So nice. On. So I feel like I, I'm pretty confident I could beat this one. And it's fun enough to play. I just the only downside for me I could see is that the story, even though there's like they're trying to build out this fantasy world, I can see already the story not being that interesting. Like not ending on that sure. much of a high note. Because it is oh, a I... story and that's I feel like they're not really gonna hit not even any they're not even gonna bother with tropes. They're just gonna be like we just gotta beat the bad guy. Go do yeah. it. Yeah. You know? I do want to say this. Uh the main character in my opinion, again super early, is not Jack, annoying. Yeah. He no. might be annoying no. later, but right now he's very charismatic, and I actually like him. Whereas in all the trailers, I was like, and when they brought him out on one of those shows where yeah. he was out there with Jeff, and I was like, yeah, yeah dude, I don't like you. Like, he looks it, like a handsome CW kid, yeah. He yeah. was in Gran yeah. Turismo, yeah. the movie You're Gran like, Turismo. Mm, okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he was. Oh, is he um, the main the main kid? No, no. And no. Grand Turismo, oh, okay. he plays like one of the GT Academy kids who's like, uh, I'm better than you. Like I was gonna say, but he's like a rude dick or something. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I yeah. bet you he's, he's the stereotypical the better character. than you uh, student, <laughs> basically. But he has uh, not been is. super annoying. In fact, like he's been kind of pretty cool. And I was like, yeah. all right. This and is, every this time he's asked a question, stuff. like out of frustration, I was kind of like thinking that already. Like there was a part where mm. the person that you're talking to from Firefly, that actress. Where she was like, okay. we do. Here's what my team does. We do this, and he was like, cool. Why didn't you do that back there? And I was like, I was thinking the same thing. Like, why didn't you do that? You know, oh my like, God. <laughs> so, it's so, sir. 
It's people, sir. Act, sir. people it's acting sir. like actual people. That's always uh, refreshing. I know. It is, yeah. But at least so far, you know, maybe he gets a little too cocky and break big for his bridge. I'm late. sure he does. Yeah. I can yeah. tell. I can tell. Like once he gets his his crap together, he's going to be cocky. But yeah, he's not he has annoying. a goal in mind starting out in the game. So I'm sure once he hits that, he'll be insufferable. Uh, I did. <laughs> by the way, I didn't buy the game. I just rented it through the uh, oh EA play. EA, yeah, yeah, the EA Play Pro. Um, fifteen dollars. It gives me access to Madden too. So I was like, yeah, I'll just do it for Heck a month. Yeah. Um, and then I will buy this game for sure. I will because I was like, I'll just rent it, and if I don't like it, I'm not buying it. But I'm definitely gonna buy this game. It's it's definitely worthy of a purchase later on. And Madden is not high price. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Madden. High price. I, I say that's right? why I got crap every year. I played like two quarters. I'm not gonna play anymore. You get it. It's the same. I game. don't got time for it. I ain't got time for it. Football be footballing, right? Yeah. That's good. That means we've had uh, two more games worth playing already this year. Good. We need more of those. I, yeah, we're not enough. <laughs> There's not enough. There was part of me, even though I already knew the answer to this. This part of me is hoping that you guys would be like, don't play the Armored Core. Don't play Immortals. You mean Alien, you were hoping for an garbage. Atlas Fallen repeat? Because Atlas Fallen was was du- doubling yeah, in the, the worst that, ways. That gave yeah. me a reason to be like, oh, okay, cool. That was on my radar. I did think it looked intriguing. Now I don't have to worry about it. Because, Same, yeah, that yeah. was so... Oh, that's it was a okay. bit of a relief, like, almost. Yeah, kinda, you know? Just not uh, it, as great. a game that, especially when you guys get Immortals on sale and you actually play it, you'll be like, I can't believe I got this on a sale. Like, you'll actually... I, I'm pretty confident in saying that. You'll be like, this is this is a good game. Like, at it's least like the way it plays. about folklore, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What? Another game that came uh, out. For, Forspoken, not folk. Excuse me. Forspoken. <laughs> yeah. I was like, folklore. Wasn't that a PS3 launch title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. R- wrong uh, fantasy uh, uh, F word. Forspoken. <laughs> that's up in the game of the year for me. Okay. Wow. Let's move on. Let's, yeah. let's continue. All, all the way on that one. Let's move on. Let's move on. Of course it is. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look, whoa. look what whoa. platform it's whoa. on. We all know it's deserving of it. Okay. Come on, man, dude. Uh, I mean, it released on PS5, so it's automatically game. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. The uh, best Square Enix game to come out all year for sure. 100%. <laughs> ever, <laughs> ever even. Fighting words. I like it. <laughs> uh, there was another game that came out this week that is not getting the best of reviews, but I'm intrigued by it. It's got uh, Troy Baker and Roger Clark, and I think her name is Jessica Brown. She was an actress who I saw in that um, Last Kingdom show. Anyway, so basically saying it's got a great cast of real life actors in it. The visuals on it, I thought, looked really great. It kind of had a what if Telltale used super modern, you know, engine to mocap a game of theirs. That what kind of thing. Telltale wasn't lazy. I guess kind of. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, so that's how it. Oh, looked. that was just my Kotaku. And so <laughs> this, I don't know how to say it. Fort Solus or Fort Solace. I'm not sure exactly how to say it. I think it's Solus. Um, but it. It's not getting the best reviews. I know at least Jeff, you bought it. Did you play it? No, I didn't buy. I didn't buy it. Would you say the game is soulless? Oh, good one. Yeah. Well, actually, that would fit a lot of the reviews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna buy it. I planned on buying it, and yeah. then Steam user reviews were like, "Don't, don't. It's terrible." And then I went, "Okay, Steam's." Yeah, dramatic. sometimes Steam is dramatic. It's true. Yeah, so sure. let me go. Let me go look at mainstream, and all the mainstream reviews were like, "Hey, it's it's very bland." And mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. after I found out it was like a two two and a half hour vi- video game, and Roger Craig or whatever on the show is like, eh, "Our game was never delayed, dude." Do not compare that to a freaking game that's like yeah, sixty like hours yeah. that's building out big worlds, and you're talking about how our game was never delayed. It's two hours. What did you come <laughs> into a studio for like three hours and record a session, and then they were yeah, like, "All right," because yeah. obviously you didn't have much of a script. But anyways, mm. yeah, it's like a two and a half three hour game, and it's like for twenty. Actually, it's twenty five dollars. Which I look when I looked at that price tag, I was mm. like, "What? Get out of here." Uh, and then I mean, for, the tech, be for how the visually name. how how good it looked, plus how short it is, I was like, okay. And the cast, I was like, okay. That and the cast, the cast yeah. is definitely. I mean, you got Arthur Morgan in there, right? And yeah. Freaking yeah. sure. Arthur. Our damn way. Arthur Morgan. Yeah. What about the money? <laughs> Need more Dutch, money. I, I don't know about that, Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> Dutch, everyone's real worried. <laughs> of course, uh, I yeah, went down so this I did, uh, I didn't rabbit because. Because the Go same ahead. exact thing that Derek said, I was like, I looked at the reviews and it was both user gamer reviews and it was 
obviously press uh, that like yeah. both of them equally were kind of like, uh, no, it's not a good idea right now. And I was like, well, all right, well, maybe when it's $5, I'll get it. I don't, I don't know what to tell too, you. Because they were advertising. Yeah, it looked I cool. mean, they were on Gamescom. They're pushing like, it. They, yeah, yeah. They're pushing it. Yeah. So. Um, I went down a r- little bit of a rabbit trail with Arthur Morgan stuff, and I saw that some guy could do a Mister? really... Some guy right. could do a really good Arthur <laughs> and went um, went on Red Dead Online and was just talking to random people as he went around and did missions and stuff. they still do that, yeah. That's amazing. And, uh, but he, he, had the, the he had like the Arthur skins and, and he'd be up there and be like, what are you doing over here, boy? Like he would be like, doing, boy. yeah. <laughs> He was really kind of like, like, like uh, a, a totally separate guy. That sounds just like Dutch, and they'll like fight each other on the same. <laughs> <side>. <laughs> All right, I like that. Oh like yeah, the, he'll, like he'll do like, I have a plan. Yeah. Uh, like, and the, it's like they're just talking right back, and like the other gamers are like gather around them, like it's it's, it's Dutch, like a play. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, some of the guys showed up and was like. All right, Black Lung. Like he did, like the oh, yeah. Micah voice, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is great. That, I like, I like that. That's fun. That's yeah, fun. that's, that's super a good cool. time. Um. All right. So another game that I know a few of us had on our radar, but again, a weird thankfulness that it turns out it doesn't sound all that great is <laughs> WrestleQuest. So I'm not, yeah, no, I'm not sure I'm gonna sure. grab this one. I played the demo. I get the vibe. I like the vibe. Yeah. Reviews are saying that it essentially is exactly how I remember the demo being pretty janky. It's not super smooth. And I was reading a lot of the reviews just thinking, oh, I feel like this extra year since I played the demo, they haven't really improved the core pieces that I thought maybe that's when I hear, I hear it doesn't grow at all either. So what you played, that's yeah. that's what it is. That's like that's game. what the fight. Yeah. yeah. So, so it was, it was just a little like, bit of oh, a relief in a way. Hours. Save some time yeah. and money, but also a little bit of a bummer because that was a really cool. Concept. Yeah. And especially yeah. for me, because knowing the devs were genuine wrestling fans that yeah. invited in real wrestlers to come in and participate in the marketing and in the game. And they invited like wrestling journalists to come in and actually be in the game. Uh, and like, yeah. damn, that sucks, man. That's it just suck. Yeah, I'm with you there. Suck. It does suck. Um, Speaking of which, uh, just feel like I should mention it just because I know a bunch of us on the show have been wrestling fans. Jeff currently is an avid wrestling watcher and keeps up with it. But superstar Bray Wyatt uh, passed uh-huh. away this past week. It was super sad to hear. The guy was only 37, 38. He was my age. He was 36, yeah. Yeah, we oh, were literally 36? just discussing that other guy that passed away at how old? 70-something? Like... Oh, Terry Funk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah Terry yeah. Funk. So, yeah, yeah. It was Terry a brutal Funk. year for... Sad, that should have been my background, actually. Yeah, sad week for um oh nice. That's awesome. Yeah, his his gimmicks that he had he had come up with a couple different characters and was they were great. They were like caught on and he's just he was great yeah. on the mic. Um and I wasn't really following WWE, but I saw so many clips and I ended up watching like certain big moments between you know, people like him and The Rock had good moments in there. Yeah, the, the ring Rock, characters. this was like early on in his run as like the cult leader, the Wyatt yeah. family, where like The Rock was like just giving him straight up praise, like even though Wyatt was in character, he was the type of person to never break kayfabe really on uh, in the show. Um, the Rock was just like, let's pause for a minute here and acknowledge that you're charismatic. The fans care about you, blah, blah, blah. Like, and he's doing it in front of a WrestleMania crowd. And like, yeah. but the veterans like just love this guy. They loved yeah. his uh, awesome. creativity because it was unmatched. Like nobody had the mind for their own character and their own wrestling act the way this guy did. Like, it's yeah. just, yeah. it's such a bummer. And when WWE tweeted like, there's never going to be another Bray Wyatt. That's the set. That's 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 the biggest mm-hmm. part. I mean, for wrestling fans, at least is like, sure, yes, obviously, there's a tragedy of him being a dad and stuff. And that's that's the biggest bummer. But like for wrestling fans, it's like, yeah, th- this guy's not going to be imitated. He's one of a kind, you know, even if all of his stuff didn't always work. It's like he had a unique singular vision for his mm-hmm. character in every iteration, like the Mr. Rogers and and then monster character or whatever. That was just. Nobody was ever doing anything Mr. like that in Rogers? wrestling. <laughs> yeah, he had a Mr. Rogers character that was like a kid's show with horrifying puppets on it sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and if, His... if and if he was feuding with somebody and they pissed him off, he would come out in like a full horror outfit and just annihilate them and he'd be in God mode and like he would never get hurt. Like it was just, it was such a great character, dude. His and, his fiend character was awesome. That mask yeah, was really the iconic. Fiend. The fiend is the other side of the Mister Rogers character. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> I mean, great gimmick. So yeah. yeah. What a what a loss. Very sad. But just wanted to at least acknowledge in his, that. Uh, in his last one, you know, he still was able to return to the company. Uh, you know, Vince when he was still running things and like. He and the new CEO guy, whatever, were like just cleaning house. And Bray was one of the people that got let go during COVID. Um, 
And then Bray came back after Vince, like a week after Vince retired, there was already rumblings. Bray's gotten re-signed. Bray's coming back and uh, uh, retired, quotes, air quotes. Right. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, when Bray came back, he came back as like this iteration of himself where he was, when he was on the mic, he was talking from his heart. And he, so he was able to say to the people as himself, it really matters to me that you, you appreciate me and blah, 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 blah. Like mm-hmm. he was able to actually at least say that before all of this happened. Um, Dang. Yeah. Which is kind of weirdly poetic and I don't know. Yeah. He got a chance that. to say things that a lot of folks don't get a chance to say. Exactly. Time's up. So yeah. that, yeah, very, very sad, but um, wanted to at least acknowledge that. Um, all right. So. I don't think any of us are playing anything other than Blasphemous 2. Ride 5 came out this week. Smurfs Kart came out this week. If you no, none of y'all played that. Smurfs Kart. I'm really disappointed. I did not play Smurfs Kart. I flattened it. I already can't believe it. not one of y'all. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, I jump on a lot of swords, guys. Okay, I need y'all to pick up the slack a little bit. <laughs> if, if I've been playing everything. There's no, I have the there's, there's no offense meant by this at all. But Gaston, dude, <laughs> Smurfs Kart's a game for you, buddy. <laughs> Just go to Gaston. Even though... Your opinion yeah. on a Smurfs cart. Please play it and let us know. Yeah, when what they don't the... make Smurfs cart too, there's only one person to blame. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, all right. I do like him like posting in the Facebook group all in freaking Derek Teague mode. All this caps. is your fault. This is your fault, Derek, with all caps. He's just yeah. yelling about Crash uh, Team Ru- <laughs> Team Rumble or Rumble, whatever, yeah. and he's like, "I'm carrying all your asses. What the f is going on?" Like, it's like, yeah. "All right, Caston, it's all right." Yeah, it's okay. yeah. I, I love do his like passion. His po- I do like his post where he's like, "Get fucked, everybody." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's <laughs> he's a trip. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, but I do, I do know that Blasphemous Two came out, got great reviews. I know Jeff is definitely playing it. That's another one yeah. that I've got. Like, hey, if it hits Game Pass or a good sale, like. I do want to try it. I I liked the first Blasphemous game, but I didn't love it. It didn't totally hook me. And my my problem with a game like that, and I know they're not exactly trying to be the same kind of game, but when you play something like Dead Cells, um, and even in my case, I played a game like Sundered, these really fast-paced, super satisfying, very responsive types of combat, and you play Blasphemous, which is much more purposeful, and the movement's just much more... Slow is one way to put it, but I would say it's much more purposeful. Oh, there's the fiend. Right there. Nice. Yeah, his mask is awesome. Yeah. And that's, yeah. that's Mr. Rogers' character. <laughs> oh, I've seen I've seen <laughs> yeah. that, uh, yeah. that mask. Okay. So anyway, was, sorry, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Um, anyway, so Blasphemous 2 is out. I know people are loving it. They're saying it's what you want in a sequel. It's improved all the things that were good and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what do you think about it so far? Uh, yeah, I don't know what it is about these side-scrolling, like, 2D retro pixel graphics, like, platformers that um action games metroidvanias i guess i don't know if there i can't remember if there's like a level design that you have to i guess there is there is it's a metroidvania i don't know what it is about these and their difficulty that i'm like yeah okay i'm patient for these i don't know what it is i can't explain it but i'm not that far in whatsoever there's like a there's like a tutorial boss that you pretty much start right he's the first enemy you fight and he, i basically had to let him kick my ass to discover his uh attack pattern but the thing is with these games is their attack patterns are like two attacks, uh, at least the starting boss. So they're an easier study, at least for people like me that are a little derpy with these mm. difficult games. Um, and I discovered later that if you even have an enemy approach you, you take on damage because like there was one part where like a guy wasn't swinging at me, but just being near him was like causing damage to me. And my, <laughs> my health bar was just going and I was like, what the hell is going on with this game? Uh, anyway. You're right, though. It's not Dead Cells. It's not fast-paced. Uh, so you kind of have to be more diligent about your attacks and stuff and, and when right. you're choosing to do it. Um, especially when there's multiple enemies and you're like, oh my god, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Uh, I've already died like several times and I only played it like half an hour. <laughs> it's a tough game, for sure. Um, I mean, I'll go back to it because just because I like the vibes and I like how it feels. Like I like how the combat feels, even though it's not a faster-paced uh, Dead Cells. There's nothing compared to that one combat-wise. But uh, yeah. Also, uh, th- that's my another knock I have on, uh, or a knock I have on it is um, what I mentioned earlier about the story and how it's like nonsense to me. Maybe people with more like gothic appreciation or something sp- spiritual appreciation will understand it on some level, but to me, it might as well have just been in Latin. I don't understand any of it, uh, so I just skip it. It's cool imagery. There's some really cool transitional animation uh, cinematics. 
Um, but outside of that, I'm like, Sk- skip. Good lord, it doesn't make any sense at all. Skip, mm. skip. skip. Yeah. Skip. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll go back to it and maybe I'll have a more enlightened take on it than just I died a lot and it felt good to kill the first boss. Uh, I, but... di- I died a lot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's about right. There's a lot of uh, games right now about just dying and being dying. Yeah, yeah. So and yeah. It's the one I chose is the one that's probably shorter. Yeah. <laughs> so much dying. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Uh, also, this week we had the Gran Turismo movie hit theaters, which is already referenced once. Um, Jeff, you've seen it. I don't know if anyone else is seeing it or planning on seeing it. But uh, what are our thoughts on the Gran Turismo movie? Which it can't be good, right? It's impossible for it to be a good movie, right? Jeff, good. Jeffrey, Jeffrey, it's good. I don't know what to tell you guys. It's it's actually quite good. Um, I think That's it's, what I it's heard definitely something good. that Derek said, which was true for Immortals of going in with those expectations that it's a very animated vom uh, that he just shared with us. Uh, yeah. But it's it's just the uh, the expectations that I had were not nearly like Immortals were like middle middle of the road expectations. This one was like I already saw the movie. It was in the trailer. So what else are you going to show me, movie? And I am so thrilled to be wrong about that. The movie is not just GT Academy and him succeeding at that school. That's that's a third of the movie. That's it. It's not mm. even that much of the movie. Um, unfortunately, though, that is the most cliched part of the movie. <laughs> it's when he's actually able to like get out of that school and mm-hmm. go actually do races that some of the gamers and you know racing fans alike will like recognize these tracks that he's racing. Um, and they'll respect that, you know, Neil Blomkamp like shot it in a way that, uh, I don't know, you can kind of comprehend the full scope of the track. And he even threw in little video game elements. Um, he, sorry, he even, uh, he even threw in like little video game elements that were like, uh, like when you saw the, his place in the race, it would like have like a carrot and it'll have like eight. And then if he advanced up, you would hear that Gran Turismo sound, whatever that sound is, to in order to advance your, your to your next menu or whatever. It's basically the PS5 sound. Whenever you boot up your PS5 and select options, it's it's that sound. Mm. Um, I know that because I played Gran Turismo 7 after this movie. <laughs> mm. All right, yeah. so this movie was good enough that you yes. fired up the game. Yes. They got him. Yeah. I was like, I want to drive that car. I want to see what's going on here. You're like, yeah, obviously you start with nothing in that game, but uh, <laughs> but coops and uh, whatever. But um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, How, I, was the point it, is was that it inspired me to play it. Was it just like you and a couple? <clears throat> Not people? even a little bit. Uh, there was like maybe <laughs> seven other people in there, um, and it was like the biggest Dang. auditorium that they had in my theater. Did you see the guy in the back? You know who that was? That was Jimmy, and he was just like, Jimmy, yes, I, yes. You love, you love this. Tell me you love it. <laughs> He um, knew you were going to go home and buy uh, Gran Turismo. So he's like, yes. Got there's it. like, there's so many cliches. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Where it's like the dad doesn't approve. And, and you know, the kid, some of the kids are hard asses at the Academy. No. Uh, and then when he gets to the actual races, of course, other racers hate him because of his background of work coming from gaming. Sure. Um, and stuff like that. But the game like has such a respect for uh, Gran Turismo as a sim and not a game. Like, it like it it truly like they say it several times in the movie where it's like well i mean and, yeah it's not just a racing game it's a it's a literal so it says it at the beginning of the start screen it says real driving simulator uh yeah it is literally a driving simulator and if you got the controllers for it and the pedals you could actually drive for real yeah, <laughs> like see, derek likes yeah. simulate simulation games i've been saying this for a long time he just won't admit it he likes simulation yeah. games i do not you love gran turismo <laughs> that's gran a simulation turismo. game no <laughs> No. I do not play it as a sim. I run people off the tracks. I ram them. So you're Stop. a lunatic. Hey, some of that's in the movie. So, I mean, that's not... <laughs> so I said a couple people in my day, so I'm not going to lie. Uh, yeah. Hey, when you play They're... Lawnmower Simulator, you can go whatever direction you want. You can mow over th- whatever right. you want to, you know? What kind of anarchy is this? No, there's a way to mow. You have to mow right there. That's a way to mow. <laughs> Um, I, I have to give a shout out to uh, the acting performances because starting out, the actors are working through some pretty very, very cliched, like middling dialogue. Mm-hmm. And it's tough to take them seriously. But down the stretch, like um, the, even the lead had to do reach down deep and do some emotional scenes. And I was kind of impressed by that. Um, but David Harbour was obviously like the best part of the movie. And then Jaiman Hansu, who plays the lead 
kid's uh, dad oh, yeah. has this really emotional scene in the movie that was just like, it's just chef's kiss, dude. It was so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, because there's a wreck in the movie, which happened in real life, but they, they changed the timing of it in the racer's career. Um, <clears throat> and the way that they shot that wreck, dude, holy crap, dude. Neil Blomkamp, good job with that, man. Wow. He's, you know, yeah, he's, he's listening good. to this, so... He knows how to yeah, do yeah. some stuff, I guess. Yeah, yeah he might know if you think... Remember Chappie, guys? Remember? Yeah. yeah, remember Chappie? Yeah. Remember Hugh Why Jackson? Why voice Chappie? All right, remember this... the ant word? No, um, listen, <laughs> District 9, okay? It's a great movie. District 9's amazing, dude. Uh, uh, District just don't ask him about yeah. Alien or anything. Uh, or don't ask him about District 10, because he doesn't <laughs> think he's making it, so... That's just a bummer. That is a bummer. I don't... This movie's probably not going to do that well at the box office, I would imagine. Um, uh, spoilers, it's not doing well at the box office. Oh, it's not. I haven't been keeping track at all. <laughs> it, it could That's be one problem. that makes okay money like yeah. on streaming and on digital sales. Yeah. But um, Right. Well, because it's a Sony movie, they don't have a streaming service, so we're I don't know where they're going to put it, you know? Yeah, yeah they're, the, they're, the buddy, they're buddy buddy with Netflix. Netflix might pick it up for a pretty penny. True. Yeah. <clears throat> True. And it's worth that. It's certainly worth watching on streaming. And you'll be like, you know, for a streaming movie, that's not, you know, that's pretty right. good, you know, yeah. um, but paying paying full price in the theater. I'm a chump. I pay for to see anything in the theater. Uh, but I'm just saying for people that are like sparing their money, you know, it's uh, I don't know. I don't know how people would feel mixed sides of the spectrum, I guess. OK, uh, but it sounds like for folks who take the time and spend the money to go see it. It's yeah. a pretty decent, decent flick. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and the like I, I said, the game it. it respects the game, okay. and I think the people that love the game uh, will appreciate the movie for that, and, and and admire the tracks and stuff like that too. Well, I know a couple of you have watched the first couple episodes of Ahsoka on Disney Plus. Uh, Ahsoka. Kyle, I saw you post about it, Kyle. I know you were loving the first two episodes. Give us kind of your your kind of overall take so far on how they're how this show launched. Uh, yeah, I'm really glad they did the first two episodes because I, yeah, I think you needed both of those to kind of appreciate. I feel like by the end of the two, second episode, you're like, ah, now we're we're getting to the what the show's about mm. now. Uh, and I feel I feel like that would have been lacking if you just saw the first episode and had to wait a week or whatever. Gotcha. Um, so that was nice. Um, I'm I'm liking it. I think it's good. Um, you know, I think uh, Jeff was saying that you know he was he was following it enough where he didn't feel like he needed to watch the show. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, say the opposite, specifically in articles, but anyone I'm talking to feels like they're like, yeah, I mean, it's a show about evil. Yeah, I saw people. some articles like you will hate this if you don't know rebels really well. I've seen plenty of articles like that. So I don't, yeah. I don't know where the line is, you know, but everyone I've talked to personally, they're like, yeah, I get it. Like there's a thing that everyone's after and the good guys and the bad guys. I'm like, yeah, you get it. Yeah. Star Wars, not a, you know, like Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. The wars and the stars. Um, I will say, uh, I you know, this is, uh, uh, I saw someone call it the anti-Andor, and that's true. They were saying it in a negative way, but, like, it is the anti-Andor in every way. Uh, but, like, I, I think it's a good thing. You know, while, while Andor is, like, this grounded, gritty, kind of, like, philosophical war thing, uh, this is, like, dumb space magic, MacGuffins, you know, yeah. like, yeah. zingers and, you know, a playful characters that having playful conversation. It's Star Wars, you know what I mean? It's Star Wars that it's, mm. like, most, like, uh, you know, original feeling, if you will. That, that kind of fun sense of adventure and stuff, so. The trailers didn't give me that vibe, so that's interesting to hear. The trailers made yeah, it seem still, much more, like, dark and heavy and lots of There's still plenty of dour stuff, but, like, there's a lot of, like, I mean, like, you know, you have a, a mouthy droid in it, Hu Yang, who uh, is, like, a... Um, lightsaber philosopher droid you know and like he Who's gives a... a lot of like funny that c3pos dialogue you know where oh, okay, he's nice. david yeah, tennant yeah. david tennant's voice david tennant voices yeah. him yeah okay, nice. um yeah. so yeah well i mean you know and i i feel like we got like one of the best like villain introductions like in a long time in star wars oh, cool. like immediately i'm like i'm in on these two orange lightsaber people um oh, yeah. skull and hati uh you know who are also um uh, the wolves that like chase the moon and yep. Norse mythology. Yep. Um, but yeah, yeah. It, I think that they like the way that they introduce them. You're just like, yeah, I'm all in on this. And Ray Stevenson's like a real presence. And uh, you know, his, his late, his like a uh, sidekick or whatever his Padawan is uh, you know, she's pretty cool too. Yeah. Some good lightsaber fights immediately. Nice. The show looks like, you know, it looks good, you know, but like it's, um, I'm interested to see kind of how much more, uh, you know, gets put in because I know like one of the main rebel characters is like an all CGI. It's Zeb. Uh, you see him in Mandalorian season three and he's like all CGI. And I'm like, well, I can't be cheap, you know? So I have a feeling he might get put like sideline for the whole series, but this is a rebels reunion. It's a rebel show. You know, there's a lot of questions immediately. 
uh, in terms of like Ahsoka and Sabine's like uh, relationship. Sabine's this cool like Mandalorian girl. She's easily one of the best characters like Filoni's ever created, uh, and sh- it's it's really her show. Like it should be called like Ahsoka's Sabine story or whatever, uh, <laughs> because I feel like she's like first build actor to be honest. I feel like yeah. she gets a lot of scenes. She's getting a lot to do with a lot of stuff. She's getting the arc. She's getting the arc. Ahsoka's yeah. not really, like, she's going to be a Jedi the whole thing, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't, you know. And and Hera uh, as, um, what's her face? Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. She's really yeah. good, too. And she's, like, a general in the, uh, you know, the Republic or whatever. And, like, it's cool to kind of see a character of that station kind of go around and throw weight and rank around to a lot of people. That's been pretty fun. She's pretty sassy, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, leader but uh, she's the leader of the ghost crew and stuff like that so i'm i'm really enjoying it i don't i don't know i i think uh it, hearing from jeff would be the more interesting thing because he doesn't have any kind of connection to any of the uh, cartoons no, or anything like that if so. i ever like get confused about something like uh so who is this person again where they come from i just look it up it's not even that hard to do. It takes me yeah, two seconds probably a during the episode. It. Yeah. It's yeah. much easier to type out your complaints on social media and send them out <laughs> exactly. into the ether. Yeah, right. I just, I just while I'm I watching the get show, it. and if and if it's not too much of a dialogue dense scene, I'll just pull up my phone on Wikipedia and be like, "Do they have a wiki entry? Oh, they're Mandalorian. Okay, like, I mean, that's the thing I did with Sabine. I was like, "Why does she have a Mandalorian?" Thing? That means you don't just get to tell up. everybody your opinions <laughs> that are better than yeah, everybody else. Right. Sometimes you know? the explanations right. are Occam's Razor. It's exactly, yeah, exactly what you think it is. Yeah, it's exactly how they there's even itself. less of an excuse now because you could just go to like Chat GPT and say, "Walk me through this. the plot summary of this character's arc and." It's Star Wars Rebels, and it'll like blah, 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 there you yeah. go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know there is a chart out there that have been, has been put together by a bunch of Star Wars experts. I don't know if it was Wiki, w- Wikipedia or whoever, yeah. but they put together like essential yeah. episodes for um uh for like to watch before Ahsoka, and it was like it was a couple clone, not a couple, but a few Clone Wars episodes and a few Rebels episodes, and it was that was it. And it wasn't even like a full seasons. It wasn't like twenty. It was like yeah. a reasonable number. But even yeah. then, I didn't have time, and I was just like, I'm just going to watch it blind, you know, whatever. Um, and even so, like, even even not having this background, I mean, I've seen Ahsoka, obviously, in the show Mandalorian. Uh, spoilers, I guess. Uh, if you haven't seen Mandalorian for some reason. Uh, Star Wars uh, people and other Star Wars like things. Two I mean, seasons yeah. ago, yeah. I know. Come on. Um, but uh, <laughs> even then, the, sh- the show, the writing of the show still had me, like, invested in caring about these characters in, in big ways. Um, Sabine especially. Um, and, uh, what's her name? Hera? She's, I mean, yeah, she's already a general, so it's kind of like she won already before the show started. Yeah. So, uh, there's, I mean, but it's the way that, like you said, that she's throwing away her weight around. That's a lot of fun. Especially in that scene where they're at like this other space station and everybody's kind of being acting. Like, you need space. credentials. She's like, I'm a general. You know, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of that. Like, that's classic. I don't need anything. I'm literally you just need to do what general. I tell you to do. It's pretty cool. Yeah. You know? Nice. Well, but she's a woman, so I'm sure that made people mad. You know, her throwing her. Away. I mean, it's all women in this show. So yeah, the whole much, yeah. cast is women. Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's a good um, trigger warning for folks. If you don't like yeah. shows that feature mostly sure. females, I mean, uh, watch so <laughs> like uh, most people are enjoying it. I've seen mostly positive reception. GameSpot gave this a two out of ten so oh, you know oh wow. game spot really showed up to were yeah, they games. like were they like it's not a game two out of ten is yeah, game that's like the you only have to watch logic. rebels none of this makes sense two out of oh ten oh yeah none of that's this makes sense hearts. a two uh, wow yeah, two a two that's two, two out of the try hard tracker. tracker try hard tracker uh, yeah super tracker. i will tracker. say this though i appreciate more of the zero to ten scale being used every once in a while just this seems like a ridiculous <laughs> i story. love that positivity tim yeah, yeah that's that's the silver lining um yeah yeah it's, really it's, it's only eight episodes long i don't know if they ever intended it to be more than one season even though i think everything has like franchise potential you know these yeah, days absolutely. uh but i think that this is supposed to be an encapsulation encapsulated story i think um and uh, the pacing seems really like there's already something very 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 big happening that like kind of changes where we're going in star wars maybe forever you know so it's like and i thought that was really big you know they're talking about other things going on uh because the the idea is uh and at the end of rebels uh thrawn and ezra ezra is kind of the person that they're chasing after this like you know jedi who basically used hyperspace whales to like take him and Thrawn out to a completely different galaxy and it's all about getting there uh so we've never gone outside the galaxy in a different galaxy Star Wars. I am yeah. so ever ever before and, by going out the, and because the galaxy. galaxies are you know far away you know you're talking about traveling time and space and everything like watch that. them so come like, to earth and it's the plot of like that Star Trek movie where there's whales in San Francisco 
Yeah, I'm excited about that. Yeah, does Will Smith show up and say, "Welcome to Earth"? Yeah. Does oh he, boy! Does he, All right. Does he? Does first. he show up? Stop. And that, and, Stop. And stop. Stop. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Welcome Earth. To Earth. Earth. All right, guys. Well, this past week we had uh, the Gamescom opening night live event with Jeff Keighley. If you haven't already on YouTube, I did a little. Uh, I tried it for the first time. Our live first live reaction to it. They did try to copyright flag <laughs> us for a song that's used during a trailer that was in the show. Mm-hmm. That's all it was for. It wasn't like Jeff Keighley or the Game Awards or like everyone was streaming and reacting to this. There was like right. hundreds and hundreds of people yeah. streaming it. So it wasn't Keighley or his crew. It was whoever owns the rights to that one song that was in that one trailer that can't be shown in certain regions. Mm. Whatever, man. Let like, me tell you about content ID bots. Now <laughs> we're not going to get paid. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to make so much on this. Uh, also, but very anyway. cute that Tim here was muted. For, and I was typing, Tim, you're muted. Tim, yeah. you're muted. And you just, yeah, you were just talking. And you're muted. Uh, that's because there was a, there was like a minute long delay almost. Maybe like, maybe it wasn't a minute. Maybe it was like 20, 30 seconds delay okay. between streaming and what was actually airing, which was, so anyway, I'm learning the ropes. It was funny. I had, I was muting different things when I was testing it to just mm-hmm. see, all right, am I looping my audio through correctly? I don't want it to like double up and like sound awful. So I was testing all those pieces testing it yeah. and literally just forgot to unclick the mute button on my microphone. That was the one last thing I forgot to unclick. Everything else mm-hmm. was working. Mm-hmm. Um, it's good. It's good. What are you going to do? Um, but that was, that was lengthy. I actually, it wasn't until I had already had it set up and was ready to roll it. I was like, this is a two hour show and there's a 30 minute pre-show. Mm. This is what I'm doing on the Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so go check that out if you haven't yet. I we have like a full full re- reaction to most of it. Um, and and uh, all these guys at various times were we were all talking together in chat about this, and I was trying to include some of their thoughts in there too. So even though it's only my face and the video, you also get some of their thoughts as we were going through the show, which was kind of fun. Um, but I just wanted to highlight a few things and ask you guys what you thought too. Of course, kicked off with the live performance of the Starfield. The, I don't know if that was the composer or just a pian- pianist who was playing it. I actually didn't pick up on if it was a composer himself or not. Um, but that was beautiful. Like that opening score and then it went into that live action trailer. Like that was really well done. I got to give props to whenever you can sync up video that you have planned and you have to like play at the right time and a live performer of any kind like that's tough to do so yeah props they have s- giant metronomes that are right in front of them that are like here's oh, yeah. when you start Sky, uh skyrim well, had a really good uh live action uh trailer yeah. so I, it was really I cool s- to see bethesda i think the fallout 4 did as well it was just cool to see them yeah. kind of continue that uh oh that rad i didn't know that yeah. was a bethesda staple and that's they really always cool. kind of came out like a week before the, a couple weeks you know it was like the last trailer to come out you know yeah uh, last i was gonna market. i was gonna mention it when it comes to like performing live music to live video i saw uh la la land the best movie of the 20 20- okay i saw that movie <laughs> live and there was the orchestra there there were no singers it was the actors the actors were singing but okay. they removed the music and it was the live orchestra playing the music and it was like it was i was close enough to see that they had like this metronome that was like to this like it was like their it was the um cheat code i don't know yeah it was like their cheat code cheat. for the entire cheat. orchestra that all of them could cheat. see so they knew yeah and a lot of times it's stuff. it's, it's on the, met, the metronome is on a track and so mm-hmm. they just have it planned out where the live performers know they'll even have cues that'll say three, four. Like it'll actually like cute. Like I'll actually have a sometimes yeah. spoken word cue, and then that will transition into whatever's recorded along with that live action. It trail. seemed incredibly difficult, especially during like a scene. I don't mean to do a, a spinoff, but there's a scene in La La Land where Ryan Gosling is going off on the piano, and there's no metronome. There's obviously no metronome, and the guy in the orchestra is like just, just working his ass off and i'm like how is he doing this <laughs> and everybody like did like a standing ovation and stuff too it was it was that's, incredible. that's pretty awesome that's yeah. pretty great. <laughs> so it just kind of reminded me yet again like i've been only thinking about the gameplay and how starfield's gonna make me feel as i'm playing it and experiencing it but i also and now very much looking forward to what appear to be clearly high production value with the music with the audio and of course the visuals so i am yes. as derek said just super hyped for Starfield. I'm a so lot excited. of people got their hands on this game over the Sci-fi week. Sci-fi me up, And bro. people dude, are is, psyched, dude. It is so hard for everyone to keep the lid on how much they love it. So they're they're not 
saying directly Starfield is an amazing game, game of the year, whatever else. But they're saying like this game I'm playing is pretty great. That's all I can think about. <laughs> yeah. But I can't say what the game is. <laughs> that's even better though. And also, yeah. that's also so, torturous Saints a little bit because on of how much Steam. is coming it's out. It's Saints Row on Steam. Yeah, Saints Row on Steam. About. Right. Yeah, obviously, obviously, obviously. obviously. <laughs> fixed everything, and it's amazing. Now. Saints um, Field. <laughs> so the show kicked off with that, which was great, and then it was immediately followed by a guy who wanted Bill Clinton to make Grand Theft Auto Six or that something like that. I don't know if you guys heard that guy get on the stage and yep. try to say something. I just um, heard him say something about Grand Theft Auto Six. He said yeah. something about Bill Clinton. I really wish we would not knock this nonsense off. One of the things I do appreciate, like with sports, and I, I'm not blaming this show or anything. They were obviously slow on security, and they're a little slow on other stuff too. But like, like sports as soon as they see somebody run out of the field they oh, yeah. immediately move the camera away because yeah. they don't want to give any attention and that's that's the thing like Wrestling this guy clearly went up there yeah. and did this because of the previous show that kid went up there and did it yeah and now that kid i see that kid on youtube all the time oh, yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah, on he's famous yeah. Yeah. so yeah, it's agreed. encouraging bad behavior to be famous and oh, it's yeah. really annoying yeah, yeah. it was I agree with you completely. Their the reaction time was very slow. Like if that guy had had ill intent for Jeff, which he thankfully didn't, he just wanted his fifteen right? seconds of fame. Like, Jeff could have gotten stabbed had, twenty times in the that, time that somebody Jeff, like that would have been the there. most tragic <laughs> just, live yeah. stream thing yeah. to ever happen. So um yeah, they need to, to learn from Krav Maga or something. We I mean, gotta get that guy in some classes. <laughs> he might. I mean, he, we don't he just know. Starts like, yeah. Like he <laughs> Next time he's out. not gonna host. He's gonna hire some like brick shit house to host without with zero personality. He's gonna be like, it's gonna be a hologram of him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah we are gonna get a hologram, Jeff. But we don't have to that, worry yeah. about this guy ever showing up anywhere ever again. Yeah, he got taken care of. We heard. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that that kid, he got whacked. Let's get real, guys. I think that guy's super dead right now. Like what it killed. Too. He's sleeping with the fishes <laughs> in the Germany Day. All I have to say is he'll never you bother won't see this one again. On like what? <laughs> yeah, that is so, crazy. Wow. Crazy like, on that. All right, yeah. hey, he I will not that, make what, yeah. what did you do? Yeah. Keith? Uh, can't say can't say uh anyway then they revealed little nightmares 3 which is coming out next year apparently awesome. they've really revealed the first two games on keely's shows according to what they said at least the second yeah. one was certainly revealed on the, his shows which was cool um, and then they did a little bit of a dive into Black Myth Wukong, which I, I, I know had, had been revealed before. It just hadn't registered in my mind of what this game was. So seeing this, um, some insight into this game, it looks awesome. It's like Dark Souls, Planet of the Apes. I don't know. It, Monster Hunter. It's, it's, it's awesome. Journey to the West. That's the yeah, story, it's going right? to say exactly that. Yep, yep. And yep. I hear it's like really like offensive focus. So it's like maybe it's not as right. Dark Soulsy as we're all. Maybe it's more like Ninja Gaiden-y, like from the Xbox. Yeah. You know, maybe it's yeah, a little more like that. Exactly. You know? like, there is like literally... 18 minutes of uncut gameplay out there, so maybe I should some, just watch that. Some of the stuff with like the bow staff, where you like stab <laughs> it and do these spin kicks around, like yeah. it was super yeah. creative. That um, bird thing that was shooting its like sharp feathers at yes. him, like using twirling. He was just like that was like lightsaber block blocking style stuff yeah. right right so uh, yeah it, it yeah. might be you know not as uh, again dark dark soulsy as i was you know complaining about in the chat so yeah. i'll have to yeah. do a little more digging on that exactly. one I, I, I will too because the action looks again so cool and oh, the I animation know i'm gonna is so quit good. the damn game uh like an hour in uh because yeah. of its difficulty so i don't i just need to watch more of it i just <laughs> want more games like that are fun like that one looks super cool and, yeah, and I'm I'm probably the biggest Souls fan on the show, but like, yeah. I would like a break from them. So I would like for remember games when like feeling be... powerful was cool. Remember that, yeah. guys? I like want, in video I games, I want to have like fun and not always be like, oh my God, I have to throw the next like forty years of my life into this game yeah. and completely be devoted to it. I agree with that at all. Diplomatically, like... there's room for both, but maybe we can pump the yeah. brakes on one of them. This is why I'm what I'm love saying. Like yeah, combat. yeah. The slicker combat is just more appealing to me. You know, I just I've always yeah, appreciated those kind of styles. That's of, why of I didn't really give what was it? Wo Long. I forgot the name of it. Hey, already. Maybe yeah, we'll right. talk about. Hey, maybe we'll talk about that one later. Okay. Oh no. Ugh. Or yes. <laughs> or, or no. Oh, boy. <laughs> By the way, uh, oh, I'm going to interrupt this show to talk about our swag that's not for sale. But, oh. Uh, oh. I'm not sure Gen, yet. Gen, not yet. Gen podcast cool, mug. Yeah. Uh, this is just custom made for, for me by my wife. But I was just kind of like, you know, we probably could pretty cheaply set up a quick store if people yeah. ever wanted to buy stuff like I this. I don't know why she didn't put my face on there. I told her <laughs> to put my face we on can, there. 
I think we I understand why she didn't money. do that. We don't want to lose <laughs> money. We want to gain. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. Then they talked. Then they brought up the best director of our generation, Zack Snyder, to talk about Rebel Moon. Oh. <laughs> now, I, I will Zach say this. I, I don't think he was super prepped for what he was going to say. He seemed to very oh, much boy. be going off the cuff. It was not yeah. super yeah. polished. Yeah. That being said, the trailer for Rebel Moon looks pretty cool. I uh, had a good time with that trailer. I'm trailer, also really yeah. like no one's complaining about this, like in the strike talk though. I thought that was really weird that he was promoting this movie <laughs> a during a strike Kyle. in a foreign country. Oh yeah, that's true. That's he wrote true. The and movie. there's not one article about But he wrote yeah. the movie. Yeah. He wrote and the he movie. He wrote it too. He so promoted yeah, like, it as a writer of the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's I right. don't know. You're I not it supposed just, to I, do that. Like, yeah, it's just everybody wild. else yeah. is getting hung out to dry for doing the same thing, but he yeah. just got away scot free because he did it in huh. Germany. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how. They're like, yeah, but have you seen his slow mo effects? Yeah. He does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they I, got that French girl in there. My thing with <laughs> the my thing with the trailer is um what what the hell was happening in it? I just didn't understand anything that was going. You know what? On. Oh, no, that's no, a good no, trailer because you don't want to know. Classic like look at me. Snyder bullshit. But it like, was. It was. You're right. But like, I was like, listen, it looked good though. You know, it like, did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Visually, that, at least it looked good. Yeah. Visually, it looked that, good. Yeah. That's pretty good. They got Charlie Hunnam and others in there. I, the cast. Yeah. Is yeah. I, I like the Sophia French girl. Batella, I'm sorry, I forget her name. Yeah. I should probably learn her name, but so the girl from Atomic Blonde. Yeah. Because he was talking about how it was based off of like what was it like an idea that he had about something like maybe Star when it Wars. Was, it was he Star brought Wars. it to to yeah. sell it to Star uh, yes, as but, Disney was taking over and they're like we don't him. want your dumb Star Wars yeah. fan fiction so he like changed all the names and made this movie pretty much. But that's what I mean like the way he, he still has lightsabers in the movie it's hilarious. He still has <laughs> lightsabers in the movies guys. What'd you say Dan? But the way he was talking, because Keely was like, yeah, what what made you, what inspired you to cr create any, it, like, the way he was talking about it was, like, some an idea that he's had for, like, a while or something, and it's mm -hmm. like, but no, this was supposed to be Star Wars, so it's like, yeah. you know. Like, he pitched this movie a long time ago, you know, yeah, and it, yeah, it was yeah, something it was else originally, yeah. and then he yeah. just, he got jilted and changed the name to everything, you know. Yeah. So there's gonna Whatever. Be, uh, it looks cool. It might be fun. Who knows? Two, there's two a, movies. He's already talking about a rated R extended version. An, already so talking about a Snyder Cut. And that so movie's not even Snyder Cut. I know. So to me, so, he's already like, hey, parts. I screwed the first one up already, so I'm gonna get my second <laughs> yeah. chance. And you know what? That makes no ASAP. sense because it's on Netflix. <laughs> Netflix will let him do whatever he wants, he and he's still say. choosing to do this shit. Yeah, it's so know. crazy to me. He so infuriates me. Parts. He makes my blood boil. I don't. I, know, I can tell he does. We're gonna move on from <laughs> Snyder <laughs> because I, I don't want anyone to get hurt. Uh, but it looks good. I think the movie does look good. It's a two-part movie. The first part comes out Where December is second. GTA six. Second part. <laughs> I, get it, get him out. I do love get that. Uh, get him out. I do love that the movie has every single aspect of sci-fi and fantasy in it period like it has harry potter shit in there it has like whatever whatever um, that like feathered bird was uh, it's yeah. a hypocrite uh, that's from harry potter it, yeah they did say something about how there's they're, they're in ta early discussions on a, a game adaptation for this too mm -hmm. so yeah um which it looks like a video gamey type thing um remember the last time he said he was going to make a whole universe of something it was that like of the dead army of the dead and that did not pan out so I was, i'm yeah. going to love to see how this uh yeah well, he was like, we're going to go grab novels and we're going to do movie spinoffs and tv yeah. shows and i think so i got it, one movie it'll probably just in. be these two movies and then maybe be done but we'll see we'll i see. think so too I, if it's fun it's fun i'm 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 you know right. it's easy to watch because it's on netflix so so I'm the happy. uh the developers of Black Desert, the popular MMO, um, they're called Pearl Abyss, and they have this game Crimson Desert that was announced over a year ago. Yep. Um, it, it looked too good to be true. It was one of those vertical slices of a trailer that's just like, there's no way this game is actually going to look like this or play like this. And it's probably going to be some kind of gotcha game. Well, they've confirmed it is a single player game where you pay, you buy, just buy the game for full price. And that is the, it's only single player. Stri and it actually said strictly single player action adventure mm -hmm. RPG called Crimson Desert. It looks amazing. I have no idea if it's going to be fun to play or well done or as janky as can be. I have no idea. But it looks like a mix between like all your favorite action adventure games you've seen recently. Like It's like, oh, they took that from Elden Ring. This is a little bit from Zelda. And this looks like, oh, you're dropping from the sky like Fortnite. Like what's happening right now? So yeah. it's a little bit of everything. It but it looks amazing and little pieces I, of I, which... yeah it blew me away that trailer yeah so it, I it was going to be the best trailer i remember when they first showed it i was like oh this is like a sequel to to the yeah, whatever black, the black i thought it was another mmo yeah, yeah yeah um but yeah this nope. looks 
insane too. So, but like, they still didn't give it even a release window. Although people are saying they're expecting late 2024. It's like medieval early fantasy, early. right? Like, is that yeah? yeah is that a Witcher style? style? Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. he was he was carrying around a sheep, wasn't he? Yeah. Like he yeah. barely was carrying yeah. a sheep. Like, yeah, it looked kind of like was a lot of like quest kind of it game. It was you know? set in yeah. that, but you clearly could tell there was a lot of futuristic stuff too. So agreed. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's stuff, just yeah. going to be a strictly like grounded in reality. You know, that yeah, it's gonna be I think it's fantastical. Gonna be, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm totally here for it. Yeah, yeah. it that it, that was one of the trailers that blew me away the most from this whole the whole night. Yeah, yeah, that caught my attention big time. It just looks so pretty too. So, and if it's, you've it's, ever played, the, it's built on their uh, proprietary engine, by the way, which they used for Black Desert Online, uh, oh, and it's wow. a new version of their own engine. So cool. Good I'm for forgetting them. the name of the game. Um, it's, it was an Xbox exclusive. Uh, it came out on when the X. Oh, Rise, Son of Rome. So oh, yeah. if you watch like the gameplay, Rise did a lot of that stuff, the like the animations and stuff like that, the way it, the characters move and interact while they're fighting. I love the that game. That was Rise, a great that was a great launch game. Rise was super fun. The problem with Rise is it repeated itself. But when I was watching that, I was like, Oh, this like the way everything's moving is very like movie like. Like they're changing and I was like, Oh, that reminds me of Rise. Rise had that like up close, like the way everything moved and how brutal it was. Great. So I'm excited for it. I think it looks yeah. Really this really this cool. might between this and Black Myth Wukong, those were probably the highlights for me. Um, mm. I really like both the way both those games look. Um, then they went. They uh, revealed Killing Floor Three. Uh, Age of Empires Four was a kind of out now on Xbox kind of a thing, yes. um, okay. which is cool. It's a great strategy game. Um, I don't it is, usually it love. It's a great series. I don't usually love it. strategy games on console, but it looks like they've got it pretty well optimized for console, which is cool. Um, Payday Three. They had a little trailer for that, and then they did a trailer for Assassin's Creed Mirage. Um, I'm not so saying so much happen. footage out there on of Payday Three. So yep. a lot of dev interviews and everything. Yeah. Yep, and AC Mirage, still one of my most hyped games for this fall. Very excited for that one. Uh, then they revealed Tekken 8 coming out January 26th, 2024. They had this mode, this arcade adventure mode, where you can actually go in and set up tournaments, and you make your little mm -hmm. avatar and like can wander around, I assume, interacting with other players, but they mm -hmm. didn't say that, but I assume. Um, but that looked cool. I'm not I'm not a fighting game fan, but that concept Tekken's kind of... never been. Yeah, I, I've always leaned more Street Fighter and, and mainly Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat but I have yeah. not cared about Tekken since Tekken three. Tekken Tag is the only Tekken's ever played. For me, Tekken is just the game I think of when I think of arcades. Tekken's always like yes. one of the yeah. big features. Yeah, 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 yeah. That I, oh, they, they play so yeah. good. They just they're always uh, usually the best looking fighting games, too, in my yes. opinion. I There's feel like the, from, like, the visual fidelity is we're always like top of the line for the consoles. Yeah, whenever we would play them in like pieces. the arcades at yeah. like even in, like the 90s, it would be like, why can't Mortal Kombat look like this? Like it would be <laughs> yeah. like it does one that. of those types. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mortal Kombat looks, looks pretty sharp now. Looks the best. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still I feel like I remember one of my buddies playing it in college on a Dreamcast. They have a Tekken on Dreamcast. In my mind, I've no, that was Soul Calibur. Was it Soul Calibur? Okay, that's Soul, that's Soul Calibur. Calibur yeah. Soul Calibur is my favorite. Yeah. Um, oh, that's great. Soul Calibur. They uh, yeah. they showed probably too much of Modern Warfare Three coming out November tenth. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, yes, this is always going to be visually one of the best looking games yet again. Uh, but it looked like Modern Warfare Three. Like it looked like Call of Duty. Like if you yeah. would have told me this was actually a clip from one of the games you didn't play four years ago, I probably would have believed you just because yeah. it kind of looks the same. Um, but it looks and this great. is how they always amazing. market it. They always show you a really early mission and like you it's yeah. time to do something different for sure. I, th I think that they show their games off similarly every single time at this yeah. point. Maybe it's I very should cinematic, go for my little but... spiel about what I want from their single player mode and they'll not listen to me again for the fifth year in a row. Hey guys, <laughs> could you open it up? Could you give them a little bit more player for well, now you can choose if you want to be a sniper or a sneaker. Same and... thing over <laughs> and over and over. Yep, yep, yep. So that's coming out November 10th. Uh, they had a new trailer for Nightingale, which I thought looked notably better. Um, yeah, you know, there were some yeah. updated designs, and the world looked even sharper. Like Super I can just tell they've been that. like they've been working on this thing. It, it was they were hoping for early access a year ago, right around now, and it didn't. They didn't hit it. They pushed it to early 2023. They pushed it again without like a date, and now they've got a date, February 22nd. That's still their early access release. So small team, we know. Like, I, I don't expect it to be like 100% finished, but I'm very excited for that. Um, um, it looks so fun. 
some big names though. I don't I don't recall the names, but it was like people from Dragon Age, right? The Dragon Age teams. Yeah, it's the guy from yep. Bioware, right? Went and made yeah, yeah. 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 It's literally yeah. Dragon Age. <laughs> this is, is Dragon there... Age. Made Dragon Age Valheim. is life. I thought we were Dragon Age Valheim. Valheim. We couldn't, we couldn't, guys. Dude, that's a that's a great <laughs> combination. No, we're never, we're never, so they, they we're actually never showed really some of the Dragon. building and some of the like house like the fortresses that you built. I was like, all right, I think they've upgraded this too because these systems didn't seem that fleshed out. Yeah, showed it before. So it seems very big. It seems like a very big idea, high concept big. idea. Yeah. yeah, very, very much. So I'm looking forward to that, of course. Uh, a couple quick hits: Grand Blue Fantasy Relink looks cool. Zenless Zone very, Zero, Z Z Z. Some Hunkai yeah, Star Rail that actually looks back. cool too. Um, Lords of the Fallen, October 13th. Listen, I, this is another game that it's like it all depends on how it feels to play because it's got the look down. It's sure it's a little derivative of other stuff that's come before it. I get it. I get that criticism, but it still looks cool. Um, and if it feels right, then then I'm looking forward to that one. If I think that, it's got a nice little oh, no. twist in that you're playing in two simultaneous worlds at the same time, so you can <laughs> switch from dark to light, and That's there's cool. certain things in the dark world that you don't have access to in the light world, and so on. And I think even in boss fights, you can flip it. I, I'm not sure about that, but there's <laughs> interesting. There's a lot going on. They're changing a lot from the original so okay. and they're Pass. trying to obviously make it unique from other souls games but again, <laughs> as excited Je- as Jeff's I am words have fallen asleep right now souls game oh yeah, yeah. Pass, 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 pass. i'm like ready to i don't yeah, know yeah i i, I think the, the boss design look really good so yeah um yeah Derek, are you planning on getting that one? By the way, are you going to buy Lords of the Fall? I, I already have that one in Lies of P pre-ordered. Okay, okay, cool. P Lies. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> then they showed Sonic Superstars, which still looks like a blast, like multiplayer side-scrolling yeah. Sonic. You can yeah, swap art powerful, styles. Yeah. Like that looks like a lot of fun. And then they're going to have the last main DLC for Sonic Frontiers called The Final Horizon. Um, I think there's an additional playable character and new, you know, new Can I just say, it seemed like uh, Dr. Robotnik or Eggman or whatever is yeah. teaming up with Sonic. Didn't he murder a bunch of, like, wildlife? Like, why would Sonic ever be on... Listen, like, like things story. 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 Yeah. Okay, whatever. They all right. believe all, in redemption and forgiveness. Yeah, it didn't. Even Spider-Man teams up with villains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, yeah, yeah, yeah. when, when, when the um, moment calls yeah. for it, you got to team up with the villains. Seriously, sure, that, yeah, that yeah. soundtrack has no business being as good as it yeah, is. Yeah, why is it like that? Why is it? So <laughs> they've been like that forever, though. So I'm glad that that's yeah. I really like the It's always had good music. Yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. It's just more like epic and grand than I ever would have expected for a Sonic. It's so catchy too. Yeah. yeah. Um, the first descendant is this looter shooter from Nexon. Uh, they used all like the the buzzwords. It was like looter shooter. Uh, what was it? Closed beta. Sign up for the whatever. Like they used all these buzzwords, and I kind of buzzwords. lost the meaning. I remember the very first yeah. time I saw this game, I was really interested in it, and then whenever I saw this trailer, I go, no, <laughs> eh, no thanks. I'm out on this. Oh, one. you yeah. said looter shooter? No, I'm good. Yeah, uh, I'm, out. I'm out. Thank they you. They had the uh, actors from Fort Salas come out and talk about that, and showed a trailer. They showed this Mud Runner spinoff called Expeditions, a Mud Runner game, Crew Motorfest, Stormgate, The Last what? Epoch, Marvel Snap, and then. They showed some of Phantom Liberty DLC coming out here in about a month for Cyberpunk 2077. Nobody and that cares looks about that. Amazing. Yeah. Looks There's amazing. an hour of gameplay of that with the director, you guys, uh, talking Ooh. over it. And it's, yeah, it's excellent. That game is, it's like it a whole so different game now. You know, That's what so. CD Projekt Red does with these big DLC things. They'll do like some DLC with some new missions within the world you're familiar with. And then they'll do like this one big one, like Blood and Wine, yeah. where it's like, right. did they make another yeah. game? They did. You go to, to somewhere their... different in Blood and Wine, just like this. You go to Dogtown, a completely it's different totally place. Totally different. With its own... Right. Ugh, I'm so excited. God, I'm so excited for this game. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pumped. Um, Armor Core 6, Warhaven. Oh, and they brought out uh, Ed Boon to talk more about Mortal Kombat 1. Some of that stuff looked great. It's more story mm. stuff, um, some new characters and cameos they talked about. Um, looks dude, like a lot Sindel, of fun. Sindel looks awesome, dude. The, all this yeah. stuff, the way her hair is like even like more involved in combat, like it's insane. It's cool that that it seems like Shao Kahn and Sindel are like uh at odds. Usually they're teamed yeah. up, you know, so it seems yeah. like they're yeah. a little bit, you know, obviously the story is all about remixing storylines, so yeah. it's it's pretty I, interesting. I like that it's like a it's him coming up from from you know, building from the ground up. He's like 
kind of like you <coughs> guy right on the block and yeah, then also he's a general also he's not yeah. he's not a ruler i also I like Doro playing the bongos with his four arms on the, <laughs> the parade. <laughs> but also riding too which was really cool so it's it, yeah I, I like i like that they're kind of flipping everything on its head and yeah. and which it gives them the opportunity to to do a different story so it doesn't just feel like the same thing over and that's over that's what and i'm hoping still... i hope it doesn't like hey we're flipping everything on its head, but then when we play the game, we're like, oh, but it's all the same. Like, sure. they just bring yeah. it back. I'm hoping they go, screw everything you know before. Like, obviously, they'll respect some things, but for the most part, I would really like just something fresh and, and yeah. brand new so we can just this start This would be the time to do shit. it, right? It's Mortal Kombat yeah. 1. This is the time to do it. I can that. also see them leaning into, like, uh, old habits, uh, you know, uh, die hard, and, and uh, you know, like, some things never change across the multiverse, you know, yada, yada. I can see that BS kind They're of They're definitely so. going to do that, which sucks. The, the gameplay... I hope Sindel says, uh, too bad you will die in it. Yeah, okay. yeah, just like she does in Annihilation. Absolutely. Yeah, which is the best <laughs> yeah. line delivery of all time. <laughs> Yeah, Too the bad. gameplay you didn't look die. that different from what I've seen of past Mortal Kombat games, but maybe it is. But it just didn't it didn't look that much different from what I could tell. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to be way different because of the, um, the cameos, cameos, the cameos, because they yeah. really change like the combos and all that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of strategy. Yeah, that... I watch a lot of like the videos uh, with I'm forgetting his name, but what's his face who does yeah. like he, he all he cares about is play play. Or gameplay. He doesn't care about story and characters and all that stuff. And he breaks down like the movement speed and then mm-hmm. the combos and all that stuff. Well, and much like in any fighting game series, if there's the bones are always going to be there. But like you know, maybe they add like super moves or whatever. Yeah. You know, there's going to be I, that I, like one sense. twist the of the game. Yeah, yeah. That's what, they're not reinventing the wheel. Not like any other fighting game does either. So she don't the really cameo, want them to do the that. cameo moves. Had like where like what was it? Montaro came out. Yeah, yeah, Motaro. Yeah. Like it, 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 like was actually involved in the X-ray like uh, move, which yeah. I mean, we hadn't had that in the last three Mortal Kombat. Yeah. And they all have their own fatalities too. Yeah. So like yeah. that's the cool. cameos do. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it's a whole yeah bunch of stuff stuff. Uh, so that game comes out here in what is that? That one's three weeks, right? I um, think so. Yeah, September yeah, or something. I'm playing it September 19th, I 14th. I get early access okay. on the 14th. I'm getting the $110 version because I hate my money. I'm so <laughs> excited for that game. The $100 dude. version. I'm assuming that's going to give me early access. So. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Is it? Okay, because I pre ordered that, that one. So. That's, seven, uh, that's yeah, September I'm so, 14th. I'm so glad three of us are like, uh, are y'all getting on PS5 or were y'all getting it on? Yeah, yeah, PS5. I'm yeah. PC and PS5. Okay. Maybe we have to meet up for some late night matches then. Perhaps uh, two so copies of it, nice. just for one person, just two copies. Yeah, two copies. Yeah. Um, all right, we've got. We also saw more of Ara: History Untold, which is like this grand strategy game. Uh, Diablo Four: Season of Blood, with they brought out like the um, Gemma Chan, who's going to be voicing one of the new characters uh, in that chapter. Um, we saw Dustborn. And then, thank goodness you're you're here, which looks ridiculous and wacky. And I'm like, thank what you, Tim. is yeah. this? Uh, and then they closed it out with some Alan Wake 2, um, yeah. which was, which was, is of course one of the most anticipated games for a lot of folks this fall. Totally get that, but it just felt like an interesting way to end it. Yeah, Maybe it was a little because, anticlimactic. Yeah, that game has already come yeah. out. It's got a release date. We've already seen a good amount of it. People want to see more. Totally understand that. I'm not at all saying we don't want to see more of it. It just felt a little bit like, oh, you don't really have like a, a big thing. He yeah. meant it when yeah. he said this was a check-in. He right. meant that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he set expectations, right? I think so. their big thing was just saying, "Hey, you guys haven't seen Alan Wake, so we're gonna show you Alan Wake." That, that yeah. was really what it was. All right, yeah, he he basically was saying, "Hey, I don't have an Elden Ring at the end of this you sure. know, show." Everybody, or a death but I at least you know, appreciate didn't want to the fact that no, and I'm I'm very surprised Death Stranding was completely silent because I feel like that game's like not too far off, and like he's like, "Nah, I'm taking taking another show off." Um, so that that was kind of surprising to me, but. Yeah. Maybe the Game Awards. That's where you know. At so, this point, it has to plenty be plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. at this yeah, point, it, it has makes to be the sense, Game Awards. Like for them to not really release a lot of stuff now, because Germans don't deserve four, it. They know what they in did. Four months. <laughs> Jeez. He like that's True. what that show's True. known for. So yeah. it's smart yeah. for them to be like, Let's it is. Not, yeah, it, it, that is their not, boyfriend party. Is every yeah, Game Game boyfriend. Awards? They 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 yeah. get on stage, they kiss, and then yeah. they show yeah, off this new game. They're targeting holidays. 
2024 for that game, then he's like, yeah, let's wait till the Game Awards to really unveil it, yeah. if that's the case, right? Right, right. Because I um, think marketing really picks up next time we see it, we'll just get a deluge of like the stream mark, just like we did for the first game, and then it'll just come out finally. So yeah, agree. <clears throat> Dragon Age Four will be there as well. That's never gonna. That game's never coming. I, I they just, know, fired, they yeah. just fired a bunch of people. That game's never coming out. Yeah, yeah, yeah but those yeah. those were all the the, the LGBTQ at trans. Oh, we're gonna oh, get okay. All right. We're gonna get we're gonna get Dragon's Dogma. Now they don't have to have them. They fire. We're definitely gonna get Dragon's Dogma. We're gonna get Dragon's Dogma two before Dragon Age or. Oh my God! Could you imagine? Dragon Dogma three may come out before Dragon Age. Dude, like literally for the longest time. And they don't care. You know what I mean? Was it like? It's a different world over there in Japan, guys. I don't. know. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they <laughs> didn't even think we were gonna get a Dragon Zogma two to be honest, and here it is, almost here. Here it is. Yeah, that recent uh, little reveal was really cool. That game looks awesome. Yeah, game looks far along. Yeah. Um. All right, a couple of headlines here. Baldur's Gate three is in fact coming to Xbox this year. The holdup was the hard and fast rule from Xbox on. Uh, game parody across the Series X and S, and that was really coming back to bite them with third-party developers like Larian, who could not get the S to properly have split-screen play. Um, it just was not working. It was not... It's not, not, it's not running well so on that system. The S in Series S does not stand for split-screen play. Does not Whoa, indeed. hey-oh! Yeah. Yeah. Apparently so, it's also not the same specs as a very low-end computer either, so that's what's yeah, funny. Like, that that was oh. the thing that was funny to me to find out. Um, although, do does the PC version do split-screen, and can anyone do that with any PC? I'm pretty I sure. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, apparently... It. They made a, they bent the rule of on this console parody quite a bit for Baldur's Gate 3 to allow them to have it not be feature complete, quote unquote. Um, mm-hmm. You'll still play the entire game, you just can't do split screen co op uh, on your Series S. That's really the only look, difference. Look, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I'm playing, I've played Baldur's Gate 3 on Steam Deck, my laptop, which is the RTX 3070, and then obviously my 3090 P- PC. That game runs good, but as you get into the later chapters, or acts, I should say, (laughs) there's more and more stuff to the game, more and more environments, more and more characters. It struggles. So the fact that Larian's even saying, yeah, we could do it for the Series S is pretty crazy. Yeah, This this is a a heavy heavy game. There's a lot going on. Yeah. But Larian, and the thing is, like, they know what they're doing. They've put Divinity Original Sin 2 on the Switch, yeah. and it runs and looks pretty good. Pretty good, Not as good as, of course, other platforms, but it gets the job done. So it's, it's not like they don't yeah. know how to properly get their games ported, whether they outsource that or do it themselves or whatever. So they've done it, but this was clearly a struggle. And I think, I do wonder when the conversation happened between xbox whether phil was involved or not it was phil and larian was it after the reviews started coming out and they're like yeah this is gonna be game of the year i can see i can see the conversation phil phil spencer folded like a thing that folds really well like that guy (laughs) folded like origami dude like that i think it was smart i think it was smart to get this news out before the ps5 version comes out because the ps5 version comes out the same day as starfield i'll be honest with you I really feel like nobody thought Boulder's Gate 3 was going to be a major console. I don't think release. so either. I, don't I think, think, I think its success is a, is a runaway like yeah. Cinderella story. I Agreed. absolutely think so, yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think it's only <laughs> popular because of ponies. Because if this was not an exclusive, nobody would care about Boulder's Gate 3. I'm just kidding. You mean on, but, on console, they wouldn't care as much? That's true. It's kinda. just me being a conspiracy theorist. But like, uh, I think this is big that they got their they got the news out there. So it's like, hey, this big game is going to come to our our console, and it's going to come to our console pretty quickly. I th- I think they're trying to get it out by the end of the year, right? It's I this so. year. They they confirmed yeah. it's coming out to like, both consoles this yeah. year. Okay. Um, I will say this: like, it just okay, reminds no me, and I know we've said this. We've had a lot of chats over the years together on our various podcasts we've had about different. Um, strategies these companies have had in putting out their consoles what they should or shouldn't do our takes on that and i don't think we've ever thought the x and s were an amazing strategy because we always said this is going to be tough when they get to the 
second half of the development cycle. Mm. The S is not going to... We always talked about this. I know all of us on the podcast have always well, said this. Well, I will say this. But, I, but I, I was just going to finish that thought real strategy. quick. It, 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 we didn't think it was an amazing strategy for the development cycle. We understood, though, the marketing piece for Xbox, who's yeah. losing and needs to push out consoles yeah, at, like an, at a very so like, I friendly price. Beginning. So we, no, I, I think we understood it. it, but like when you look at what it's going to cost you from a development point of view, like that's tough. That's a little tough. You can't close this door now, though. It's open. So like now, like well, maybe we don't un, have it's wrong if you do that. Maybe we don't have all this like PS, people... like Xbox Series S, like holding everything back stuff. So you know, yeah. like it had like, to happen know, at some point. You know, maybe it's I good know that it finally happened. you and Jeff ended up getting a Series X, but I think you both started with a Series S. I said, for yeah. yeah, which I was it's totally happy with. And then Starfield and then Dan, became a real you thing. have a like, Series yeah. S, right? Yeah, I yeah. still have yes. So. so the three of you who weren't like, I'm not saying you guys hated Xbox or anything, but you weren't like diehard Xbox fans. You did. You were like, I'm not going to commit to a $500 console, but if this deal goes through and stuff like that, I want at least a Series S. I think this is a great... Yeah. a great option it's a game pass you know so honestly uh, i just couldn't find a series x that's why i got oh, okay. an s yeah, but like here. uh yeah yeah but you know it was it was a nice um i don't know fallback plan you know i it just kept know me a in lot the of next people gen that Xbox. that bought the series s because it was a cheaper option they didn't care about the graphics boost so i thought okay these are n- normally people that buy ps4 ps5 whatever playstation Second console game system consoles out <laughs> They're now, uh, they're making it, they're okay with buying an Xbox be- because they actually see the potential and because there is a uh, a cheaper version. So at the beginning, yeah, I do think it was a great idea. I just think that, and I, this is where I'm owning it, and that I did not think it was going to cause, cause this much issue. I thought people were being dramatic yeah, like, so same here. Fine, they'll be fine. And then well, I, I, I don't. And it was always it. explained to me by people breaking it down in articles that like that there literally is like you can pare down like the power of something or pare down the game to to run on things easier because there's so much PC parity between uh, both consoles and a PC now. Like I thought that's how it was explained to me. So I was like, no matter what, they'll always be able to drop. We always joke that it's sliders. They just slide sure. down, you know, yeah. but like that's kind of how they pitched it was that like, hey, we'll just, you know, this will just be missing maybe some of the frame rate or maybe some of the fidelity or the sharpness. It's not going to run in full 4K, right. but apparently yeah. it's just not powerful enough, you know? Um, yeah, I don't think and, it's just I, a graphics thing now. Yeah. And I think it's other things. And, yeah. and yeah. that's the thing, even like with bugs, like companies <laughs> will do a bug fix. And they'll you download that patch and it'll break something else. And it happens right. all the time, not just in video games, any any type of IT work. They'll be like, hey, I'm going to fix this. And mm. they fix that and then they break the thing that wasn't broken. So it's like that's what I think happens a lot of times with where gamers are a little naive where they're just like, just slide this button yeah, down slide, yeah. <laughs> and then release it. Slide that slider. Why is there such a delay? Why uh, can you just hit delay? save as Xbox Series X and Xbox <laughs> yeah. Series S, please? Like, come on. Just Dude, change the and then it just uh, does it all. You know, yeah. The AI takes over and yeah. I, I love that idea. Over. Just save it as a different file type. Something else. A lot of times. Yeah, yeah. So I I do think that uh, this strategy was smart to move more systems. I think they've made a good chunk of money they wouldn't have made otherwise. Totally agree. I do wonder though, like as you look at, okay, now we're in the second half of these consoles life cycles, give or take, like maybe a little bit, maybe not quite second half, but we're close, right? Um, Just based on how long these normally last. And so I'm just wondering like, hey, did you make enough money in this first half to make it worth the headache that it's now beginning to be here in the second half. I'm just, I, maybe it is, maybe it's totally worth it. Cause they've made, millions. I think you could turn it around too and start marketing things as series X only. And suddenly you have a boost. You know what I mean? Like people I are like, Whoa, you. this is a real next shit. Like there's a way to dig yourself out of I this. So I'm just, too. I'm interested to see if they will or not, or if I they'll mean, just stick themselves in more games on last gen. Like, so it's not yeah. like, couldn't still release stuff. On Apparently, the S Starfield and... runs at really magical numbers on the Series S, like kind of scary number. I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if consoles start smoking playing that game. Sir, the Series S <laughs> would start. I think but... first party oh, will be know. okay. I always think it's going like to be a, more of an issue yeah. on the third party. They know how to work with their own hardware for sure. Yeah. Just like the PS3, they get more like, time too. You know, the cell well. processors everyone really utilize really well in house, but out of house, yeah. you know. Yeah. Like I would be Skyrim. surprised <laughs> if like Starfield's delay, if a lot of it was just like. 
getting the series. Yeah, we got to iron out bugs, but we yeah. also got to make sure the series S isn't complete trash. Yeah. So you guys get it runs again. Time. It runs at really good numbers on the series S. So that's good. Good for that game. Yeah. Very. There you go, Dan. Thank Although God. you should be pl- you should be playing that game on your PC. You have an RTX 3070. Get out of here! Freaking <laughs> piss me off of that crap. Listen, don't tell me how to Josh, play. Josh, I want to play in my 720p. Me. All right, ladies, <laughs> keep us in All our right, separate ladies. corners. You piss me 30 off. 30 frames per second, okay? <laughs> All right. Um. So, in kind of a strange move, just because of the popularity of Mario with the character this year and stuff. Now, Charles Martinet is no longer voicing Mario, and they made he felt it sound disrespected. They didn't use him in the movie. They made it sound like he's stepping aside. But a lot of people are saying, like, I think Nintendo was ready for him to no longer do the voice. But I could be wrong. I don't well, know. Um, I kind of get weird vibes from it. it. It's very strange. So here's the official tweet. They they basically say that Charles Martinet has voiced this mascot for over 25 years. He'll be stepping down from voice acting duties and instead taking on a new role of Mario Ambassador. Um, and thanking him, you know, for all his great work and stuff. So, hey, could be totally legit where he's just like, no, man, 25 years is enough. I'm tired of saying it's a me. Like, I'm just exhausted. I'm, d- I'm done. But that is possible. Feels more likely to me that Nintendo was like, you're done. We're kind of tired of hearing yeah, you say it. And we're, right. you know, but who knows? Who knows what the actual we're, we're hiring Chris, Chris Pratt much. on full time. To oh, Mario. please don't. Well, he's oh, not the oh voice God. of Mario in the new game. The Mario Wonder. Yeah, he's, he's not, not in that. Wonder, which surprised Correct. it actually surprised me. Yeah. 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 I wonder if His, they're just doing AI, man. I'm not kidding. I'm I, not even making a joke. I wonder if they have enough data. I don't enough, even like, know why movies. you had to use Pratt, anyways. I I get it for like the star power. I understand that, like to sell that's, the movie, but like. To me, <laughs> I, I, I would have loved to have the original Mario guy doing Mario's voice. Yeah. I felt like it yeah. would have been better. I don't know, though. A whole movie of that high-pitched voice might yeah, have annoyed know, me. Yeah, thing. yeah, I don't know. I like Not it. Not very cinematic. I, yeah. I like it for little one-liners he has in the game because it works great. But if it's like, oh, Luigi, we got to go. I'd be like, all right. And I'm not talking it. like this during my bigger <laughs> monologue. Yeah, yeah it might movie. be a lot. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think Chris Pratt talked that much, though. I don't think Mario talked that much in the movie. It was more Pete. Even, even the amount he did talk would feel like a lot of that. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't he know. He was in the movie, though. He was in the movie. He was, he was yeah. the dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, he was, was in the movie. I'm just saying he wasn't Mario. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's a pretty big change. Um, We got a date for the Game Awards. It's December 7th. So Avatar will not be Game doesn't, of the Year confirmed. Uh, well, doesn't hey, Avatar come, come out on the like 7th? Like November 10th, yeah. like it is every year or something like that. So. <laughs> the cutoff will be... After Call of Duty. That's all we know for sure. After Call yeah, of Duty. I, right, I really Call of Duty. think that's we'll so dumb because some of the biggest releases come out in November. And obviously games are now. We have this conversation literally every <laughs> so year. Dumb. Literally every yeah, year. We'll keep having it. We'll keep having it. Because it is dumb. <laughs> Let's but, see what yeah. might get the cutoff this year. We've got, uh, of course, we got Avatar, uh, that Ubisoft game. It's definitely not going to be. Nothing considered. new. Yeah, um, maybe next year. Like Super Mario RPG might not make it. Persona 5 Let's Tactica see. might not make it. There's a Dragon Quest Monsters Dark Prince game for Switch. There's uh, Biomutant coming to Switch. Um, yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Really. A Persona 5 Tactica <laughs> might miss, like, if it would have won, like, Strategy Game or something. That's yeah. true. It, could have it is a new strategy. title, technically, yeah. but, yeah. There's the not a whole lot else brand. after, like, yeah. let's assume that the cutoff is, like, the 15th or so, which is it's yeah. usually right around there. There's yeah. really not a 12 in after that. Hogwarts Legacy Switch version makes the cut, and that has a shot. Best handheld. <laughs> it's got a shot. It's yeah. got a shot. <laughs> they're, not gonna, they're not going to. They're not going to consider the PC best game PS5 that exploded switches. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, not a whole lot that we know of right now, at least that are going to be. But in years past, there have been significant ones like Halo Infinite, uh, Final Fantasy 15 missed the Cyberpunk. cut. Cyberpunk, Halo uh, Infinite, yeah. and Cyberpunk are huge. Like Cyberpunk. those are huge games. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so this is, I mean, the only one this year that's of note, at, at least commercially, is going to be Avatar, Avatar: Frontiers of Pandora. Delayed. It's going to get delayed. It that's just funny. bothers me because, like, every time. <laughs> That game's getting delayed. Like you're, that's a sil- that's silly. You're that cutting off out. like big games that actually would be considered, and they don't get considered right. the following year. They never do. They last get year, no, last year it was uh, uh, Midnight Halo Suns. Last did. year, no Halo got like um, some weird something nomination for like action game or something in yeah. 2022 or something. It was something weird. Like that, nobody that cared at, by that yeah. time. Yeah. Okay, so very, last year uh, we had Midnight Suns, Need for Speed Unbound. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, High on Life. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, People like that game. Like, yeah. I mean, the, these are games that could have won something for sure. Or at least yeah. nominated. Yeah. And now they're not even going to be thought about this year, probably, because no. look, at, no. look at everything that came out. No one's yeah. talking about Midnight Suns and it's criminal. And you then, know, of course, like you, a, you have the classic uh, you have the classic turnip boy commits tax evasion. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. It's pretty cute. It's it's cute, but <laughs> it's a know. great title. <laughs> It is. It is a great time. Games for Impact game right there. Yeah, games for yeah. Impact. There you go. Game, game for Impact. <laughs> yeah. There. Oh, there was also Assassin's Creed Valhalla released like weirdly late that one it was year. Like day, it yeah. was like days past like the. And then yeah. uh, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. I think that same year. Um, yeah, yeah, was, was late like that. November. That was December, yeah. right? We're never. So we're never gonna get an award for that ever again, right? I know, it... dude. The. Uh, <laughs> That um, speaking of which, that's another headline. According to this Axios report, this the sequel to Immortals was codenamed Oxygen, and the idea was it was they were going to set it in a totally new character's new setting, right? Because if you followed the story of Phoenix at all, you know that her story totally wraps up, and like there's nothing else with the Greek gods for her to accomplish. The DLC moved it to a totally new setting, Chinese mythology, new characters, and all that stuff. And so this was going to be in the Polynesian archipelago, covering locations like New Zealand, Tahiti, Easter Island, and Hawaii. And the idea was um, the protagonist would have been able to gain elemental powers, almost like Maui from the Moana movie, um, where he could shapeshift and get new tattoos based on choices you make throughout the game's story. So like all that sounds really creative and not really yeah. a setting or type of character you normally get. And they wanted to target Wind Waker style exploration on the open sea, like with the boat. Yeah, like you're running that to cool. emulate that. Um, and of course, of course, they compared it to stuff like Breath of the Wild and Elden Ring with their like exploration but who knows if that was actually going to be achieved um yeah they wanted no like mission markers on the map yeah, or they anything. wanted it's it just, to be kind of eldering yeah. where like you the door opens and breath of the wild too and T- tears of the kingdom the door opens and like you can have some guidance if you really look for it but for the most part it's yeah it's so you, you, whatever you stumble upon that's what yeah. that's yeah. what you see that would have been but, such a great setting too like that yeah. setting sounds Unique. great right really yeah. ocean themed with no, i'm of... glad we're getting 17 more assassin's creeds instead of uh <laughs> one more of these cool really unique awesome ideas you know? i really wanted this mix i thought phoenix rising like that was one of my kind of like dark horse sleeper picks for that year i loved that game so much um but whatever what can you do it was repetitive and it wasn't the best but man it was good bones for a start for a game for yeah it, that had franchise potential all day surprisingly uh, good uh, combat like i was like this this is a kind of like a baby's first assassin's creed right because it was ki- kid friendly and, and you know it was very kind of like family friendly it was not cartoon they tried to be like jokey right wasn't it very like a joke lot of, yeah all the gods were kind of like silly and like you know yeah. ribbing each other uh, yeah. even the villain like there's a lot of Life just kind of like jokey, jokey, but man it was so fun so that was kind of a bummer for me but uh another bummer sorry not trying to make it down a downer of a show but hyper light breaker is bumped back to 2024 um saw that coming which that game looks so good so dude when they said i don't know that i caught this detail before that every run because it's much like hyper light drifter you have your runs and and if you die then you start a new run and it's procedurally generated um (laughs) well that's a poop joke dude uh so (laughs) with hyper light breaker uh it's the same exact concept where you die and when you go back out in the world, it's procedurally generated. But look at the graphical style and, and POV that they're going for for this game. Yeah. It looks it's going to be so freaking ambitious. It's like solar ash style of, of yeah. you know, yeah. worlds that they're designing. And it's I totally yeah. get the delay. Totally get it. And a lot of exploration, again, not to keep bringing up the same comparative games, but they did compare it to some Breath of the Wild with like your glider and stuff and the way you climb and oh, all cool. that. There's some. So there's it's some, more than just skating in that. solar ash, yes. which is awesome. Correct. Yeah, everyone's paraglide now. Everyone's paraglide. doing it. Um, this is pretty funny. The upcoming Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 game has a disclaimer at the start. It's going to warn uh, players that some content may not be considered as appropriate in the present day. The, <laughs> I- the idea is that, hey, this game content's unchanged, and as a result, some scenes may have a different impact than they did 25 years ago. <laughs> this game contains expressions and themes which may be considered outdated. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the disclaimer. There's uh, also some. Yeah, I thought about I thought of about thirty more after the one that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, really, sure. So yeah, I was of like, oh, okay, yeah, it's a whole series is filled with it. We we say that before our podcast too because 
uh, when Derek starts to talk, it's like, well, some of these views might be a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not well, because he turned around. Uh, by the way, uh, a lot of people got hands on with this game uh, over Gamescom weekend. Okay. I don't think at Gamescom, but some uh, another kind of hands on event or whatever. And uh, okay. the buzz is very, very, very good. So. Is it? Because right. I was hearing that, and I think the confusion was perhaps maybe the Switch version is the version that's 720. But people were up in arms about that's like the all one the that everyone got their hands on was that okay. version, and so they were surprised that it ran so well on the Switch, and it's only okay. going to run better. It's going to run at 60 frames per second on the next right. gen consoles, you know, like it's gonna it's gonna run it's better. 1080p, so. 60 frames. 1080 and 60. Yeah. That, that, I think right. that's what the confusion was because people were like fucking livid. Everyone's like, are you kidding me? 720? They're still going to be mad the- when they find out it's not 4K. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're still going to be mad. Yeah, and they're going to go, well, these sure. textures are muddy. I'm like, well, their textures are from a 20 year old game, guys. Let's, yeah, chill exactly. out a little bit. Yeah. Let's calm down. <laughs> also, like, you're, you put mud on to hide. That's what, that's what the whole point of three is, is you're covering yeah. yourself in mud. Listen, that's, that's what you're doing. I want, my, I want my Nike cartwheels in 60 frames per second. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's... I'm hoping the PC version won't be limited. I'm hoping you can just do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, there's I'll another there. spiritual successor to WWF No Mercy, and it's called Ultra Pro Wrestling. Uh, the idea originally was it's going to be um, licensed with this popular Scottish wrestling promotion, which I don't know what that would be. I don't know of any Scottish wrestling promotions. But I'm a fan. Idea... I don't even know. <laughs> They've now backed out of the project, so it's just kind of generic uh, wrestlers. Um, but apparently, they're going to be adding some "quote unquote" free agent wrestlers as paid DLC, including including <laughs> people like Al Snow, Barbarian, Blue Meanie, oh, Buff, no. Buff Bagwell, Gangrel, um, Gangrel. You know the the guy, the you know the vampire. No He's a ever. freaking vampire. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, not, a, edgy, a whole not bunch. Christian. You know the other one. There's a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so man. anyway, uh, the idea is that like they really are trying to they're saying they want to create the exact experience of No Mercy with create a wrestler and all that stuff. It's just they're going to have no licensing for it. Uh, they just got that. Okay. I feel like that just happened. Yeah, so yeah. this one's a little weird because AEW just came out. Now, AEW didn't get rave reviews, so there might be something uh, to that. But um, what what are you what are you putting in? Oh, uh, is this what gets on share? Yeah, like yeah. What, a, what a little B word. <laughs> Not okay, guess on th- this person. They they smash the control. Like, I'm never buying another from software game Who again. Some, oh, because of our Yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody tweeted it or something. You guys, like, if you oh. smash your controller like out of anger, like please go to therapy. Like yeah. that's what <laughs> was crazy. Saying. That's why I was sharing it with you guys. Is like why why again. Do we think this is okay to share publicly? Like, hey guys, I, you know, I acted yeah, like a dumbass a, a, an own. Yeah. I've never, I've never broken a controller ever. In my I get mind. like, you know, like getting frustrated and like marching around the room, being like, Whoa! you know, but like to cause physical harm to something. I don't know. Yeah. I just, now I have therapy. accidentally That's... ruined the analog stick on my N64 because I'm during Mario Party. I'm trying to spin <laughs> with my palm really fast, you know. Yeah, that's different. Like, yeah, that's totally different. I am yeah, going yeah. to. Take I did the same thing in my in hand and, solid, and like so post was, about you know, my Street yeah. Fighter Four <laughs> fist. Through the TV, because that, that's going to be super yeah. cool. I'm never People buying think a Street Fighter game mostly. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah like it's the most alpha move for sure. I uh, beat that TV up. Sure. <laughs> um, Sega and Atlas are going to have a. It actually bro- beat me up. <laughs> You're like Sega and Atlas, Atlas are going to have a special broadcast from the Tokyo Game Show coming up in September, I believe that is. Um, all about the newest titles from Sega and a- Atlas. So that's going to be broadcast uh, September 21st. Um, which 7 p.m. Japan time, which is 3 a.m. Pacific over here. So I'll just have sure. to find out the news later that day, I think. Um, all we yeah. know, of th- there's a number of games coming out of uh, of that area. Yeah. We've got Sonic Superstars, Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name, as well as Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth for early 2024. Um, remake of Persona 3 called Persona 3 Reload. Yeah, um, game's gonna be free on Xbox, guys. That's pretty yeah. nice. You can preload yeah. it now. Oh man, and a whole bunch of other projects that they've already announced. Hold so. on a minute. No, it's that, free. No, yeah, don't. don't that comes that. out. Hold on one second. February. Yeah, right? that comes out the same day as Suicide Squad, which hopefully uh, won't get delayed. Uh, that game's not coming out. It's. <laughs> it's, like, it's getting delayed. That game. That game has committed suicide. That game has. There's committed. a uh, lot of ends coming out of Kyle. I'm not hearing a lot of P's. Yeah, what's that I, about? I set it up. <laughs> That getting Kyle, with the Kyle show us some PP. Show us some PP. Uh, <laughs> be so positive that you, it's double, so it's PP. Yeah. <laughs> so there's uh, there's talk from Jeff Grubb from Giant Bomb, and he's usually on the money with some of this stuff. 
He's saying that bombs still exist. Internally at Bioware, Dragon Age Dreadwolf keeps getting pushed back. And so now Shut up. he doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Shut <laughs> up. That game, I bet that game's not Shut even up. real, to be honest. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Dude, that where's the gameplay? Where's, like the game? Deadpool. Deadpool. where's the gameplay? Where is it? It's coming out. It's coming out. These was games as a service seven. at one point, right? That yeah. game literally it was. Came Remember there were spice <laughs> words attached to this game once upon a time? That's why they fired ago, all those people. They were like, you're all games of service people. We're firing you. <laughs> yeah, he's saying uh, this long to fire them. at the very earliest late next year, but possibly, probably early 2025. That's fine. That's what I was actually expecting. I think we were all expected it to be 2030, so it'll be fine. <laughs> oh, boy. I said late 2024. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We've got Excite Bike 64. As soon as Donald Trump takes office. Oh, boy. Here we go. Make America great again. Please please never. Please cancel it. Make Dragon Age great again. Yeah, Uh, sure, sure. Excite Bike Bike 64 is hitting the Nintendo Switch online service. Let's see. When is it being added? Uh, This week, on August 30th, it'll be added. Not going to play it, but pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got a my my son was at we were talking about Zelda today because we've been playing a lot of Zelda, mm-hmm. and he was just asking me about like what was the first one called. So I was just talking him through the games, and he was curious about Zelda two. I was like, it's a side scrolling one. It's oh, a little more RPG like. Sure. It's really yeah. difficult. It's very divisive, <laughs> but like it's it's interesting because it's like part of gaming history a little bit. And everything, and all like, the callbacks oh, cool. that we know of are from that game. Actually, like they started kind right. of all those reoccurring. Yeah, you know, exactly. Uh, notions. So he was like, "Oh, that'd be kind of cool to try." And I was like, "Dude, it's all on your Switch online. Like, just go download that. Like, if all those old Zeldas are sitting on there. At least a bunch yeah. of them are." Yeah. Um. So that's have you cool. been playing? Uh. Tears of the Kingdom with your son, or are you just playing it on your own? Watching it? Uh, no, we were both playing it on our separate saves, and uh, I'll talk. See, more about that's it. that's what I did with my daughter with Breath of the Wild, and it made it more special. It's so much more fun. We're, t- we're, we're chatting. My, my life's getting a little annoyed because we're talking. We're always talking about new weapons we crafted or new some new dumb recipe for pizza or yeah. something that we discovered. It's like fun. we're just talking it's about one of those all kinds fun of. Games. You yeah. can share the experience, yeah. even though it's not She's a co-op jealous, experience. You know? She doesn't have her own Switch to play with you guys. So. Um, we talked about Stalker 2 maybe sneaking in I this year, but no, that's uh, going to be a 2024 game for sure. The trailer says they're mm-hmm. targeting early 2024 for that. Um, Stalker's targeting, got it. Stalker's targeting. Yep, yeah, it makes it. sense. Makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Um, that's really all I had for headlines. There's a bunch of other little things that have come out of Gamescom here and there, but for most part, I recommend going and checking out um, various whatever outlet you like. Oh. If you like IGN well, and then of course the and... PlayStation Portal is going to be the best accessory that's ever existed. In I wasn't even going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. No. <laughs> listen, PlayStation Portal. Listen, if we're going to talk about it, no, no to the conversation. Not show, to the <laughs> we need to be. We need to make sure we're factually accurate on what I wouldn't exactly want to be is. an agent of misinformation by any All right, means. So let me yeah. sure. let me read this to you and you guys can just calmly and ex- or excitedly respond to it. So Hold on, let me let me get uh, let me get Jimmy. Here, Jimmy Ryan oh, jumps. Oh, oh wow, Jimmy. Oh, you're here. He wants to show the fuck hey. up. And he needs so this to was a friend of the show called, James Ryan. This is called Project Q. We've been talking about it for several months on our show as info has kind of been slowly Project leaking out. You Project <laughs> Uh, good one we're already mad um now it's called the playstation portal it's going to cost 200 dollars, and it's got an eight inch lcd screen in the middle of it it's got a screen cable of 1080p resolution at 60 frames per second it's going to launch later this year i don't know if there's a date for it yet um it is described as the perfect device for gamers in households where they might need to share their living room tv or simply want to play ps5 games in another room of the house that's how sony is describing it not how tim and derek and others are describing it sony's describing it as this device is ideal for in your own home play now that being said you can still connect remotely over wi-fi so you could play it elsewhere if you've got a strong enough wi-fi connection and can remote play in like people used to do that with their vita with their ps3 and ps4 um i did it sometimes with the ps4 i found it to be super inconsistent especially terrible when i'm traveling i very rarely have a connection i pay for at home which is usually super high speed because i want a really high speed connection at home if i'm at a hotel or at an airport my connection isn't. I can't play those games on the go. IGN re- even right, said after their hands-on time, don't expect it to work in a hotel. That's what IGN said. It's not right. what I said. That IGN being said, said that. that being said, <laughs> well, there are a bunch of hacks at IGN. That's why they said that. 
That's why they said that. That's Clearly, there's a narrative. I don't know. There. I can't keep up with it all. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> sure, they, basically they, Xbox. They keep forgetting to list Xbox on all of the multi-platform games that are coming out. But yeah, they're shills for Sony. Sure. Yeah. Right. Uh, or against Sony. Um, but so anyway, the idea is that um, you can play your PlayStation 5 in a handheld mode, for the most part, in your house. And in some cases, if you can successfully connect so a Wii U yeah. tablet. I just want no, to say one thing. Tell if me you your use your phone in the background instead of this, you're a moron. Tablet. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> yeah. If you uh, already yes. have a solution for this that works for you, and it works for you specifically, just know that you're wrong. Yeah, you're oh, stupid, yeah. too. That's fair. And you're okay. stupid, and you don't deserve friends and family. Um, or something, I don't know. You yeah. know, if I this couldn't... were... Because it is, it, it is truly an accessory. It's like buying a really nice controller or something yeah. like that. Like, it's something that doesn't oh, truly... sell decent on the... I think it's going to sell well. I think, there's is a, a, I think yeah. there is a purpose for it. Oh, yeah. if it. If it were 150, definitely 100, you might actually have me buying in on this. Because the idea like, of... A yeah, but it's house. a Sony thing. Sony always upcharges on every part. I know, Not I know. just PlayStation. They really well, do. I know, and like, this is good for a Nintendo Tim household tax. where he's sharing. But listen, he's sharing when I have game. a... We have our big main TV, and during football season especially, yeah. like, I usually am playing my Switch or the Steam Deck while yeah. we're watching football or we're TV stuff. Absolutely. There's but if, if I had yeah. the ability to play Spider-Man 2, let's say, when that comes out, and everyone's using the TV, and boy, I just I, I want to play the next mission... This yeah. could be awesome. I'm I, not going to see spend, this totally working for that. But I'm yeah. not going to spend 200 bucks on it. So to me, it's mm. a combination of $200 doesn't justify the limitations this thing comes with. That's all I'm saying. It's not I, I, right. This is like really rough math, too. But like a 1080p like uh, um, a screen of that size, you know, uh, I was looking at one getting for the Steam Deck, you know, to kind of so I yeah. can plug the Steam Deck into it. Uh, and that was running like around $100 for a pretty decent size one of that size. Plus the $60 it costs for the controller. I could see that this been being sold for $150 because that's literally all it is, is yeah. a is a controller attached to that that thing. So it's like, I I, I guess I don't see the price either of it being now, $200. But maybe somebody else could. Do all the dual sense special stuff? Like it does. I think it does. Feedback. So yeah. maybe, maybe but the, those but pieces the controller, alone. Yeah, but again... First of all, they sell the white controller, which is what this is. They sell it for sixty. Um, that's them selling it overpriced, so they're not actually paying sixty dollars for each controller. So we're just giving, like Kyle's just giving a price they're for so a screen math. and a yeah. controller. If you bought it sense. separately, would be one sixty. That's not what Sony's paying. They could totally sell this for one fifty, which is actually the number yeah. I was thinking as well. Um, I think 200's high, but I also think they think they're going to sell the... I think they think they're going to sell it at 200 to people that buy everything PlayStation. So those are the people that buy the PSVR yeah. 2, which is trash, yeah. by the way. Um, and then... <laughs> And I mean, then Jimmy's having a good time. There's a lot of games coming out for it, right, guys? Wait, <laughs> right? Jimmy's having a great right? time with it. I don't know what yeah, you're talking at, about. Look at, him. look at him. He's having a blast. <laughs> He's like, I can name at least two or three actually, games about to come out on that system. Jimmy doesn't he's know like, where he is right now, actually. Look at him. He doesn't he's know. He's actually like, I'm oh. actually going to play my PlayStation Portal U while still using my VR 2. Uh, I wanted to highlight, time. Sony says, PSVR 2 games, which require the headset, and games streamed through Sony's PlayStation Plus Premium's cloud streaming are all not supported. So don't See, that's cloud. absolutely terrible. Well, you that's see, it's be- terrible. It's because Jimmy was embarrassed. Fun, Jimmy that. was a little embarrassed. See, what, what happened was how this device even came to be, all right? How it even came to be. <laughs> Jimmy Jimmy was doing this, right? Because uh-huh. this is just what he does. That's what he, that's what he does, yeah. And, but he also had something yeah. sharp in his hand, right? And he just, for whatever reason. And he he slipped and he fell, and he cut a controller in half. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, and his, and his wow. phone fell out of his pocket. It fell out of his pocket, yes. right? And it in he's perfectly like, oh, on the floor. It's a, and he, he it's was like, oh, we see. I'm Jimmy yeah. Ryan, and I see these <laughs> these I, these this, devices on the this floor. This is how I see things. I've had an epiphany. Yeah, and yeah. he saw, like, the Matrix, you know, the like, the, all the letters sure. and numbers. You know, and, and then he, he just used his uh, Tears of the Kingdom ability to fuse things together. Yeah, and yes, had it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I totally I don't, know. I don't uh, think as a Sony fan you're allowed to say anything. Uh, you know, no, don't be critical uh, on any level. Critical about about, about this so. actually yeah. product, Dan. Well, so. uh, no, I am. You gotta choose. You have to choose a team, this, Dan. This choose isn't just a bash fab. I, I always go <laughs> off on fab, and I enjoy going off on fab. I like him as a person, but I I love going in on him. But being serious, like not even trying to be like play a different side or just to agitate him. 
I 100% believe if this was an Xbox or even a Nintendo device, Fab would be making a post or other ponies would be making a post saying this is absolutely ridiculous. It's overpriced. It's Eric's trash. referring to someone who's a big Sony fan, by the way, yeah. for those of you who are watching this. Yeah, yeah. but like these PlayStation, like this, th- they're going to support this because it's simply PlayStation. That's yeah. it. Yeah, and, and again, and there's enough of a ridiculous. reason for it to exist that, like, I can see why some people would be like, no, I actually want this or whatever. Yeah, but, you know, I can see like, why Here's five wants. dudes who are just saying we don't, and that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, going to be okay, I, everybody. You're going to you're gonna sleep well. You're going to, you know, have, have some milk or something. I don't know, but you're going to be if fine. It were, if it were 99 bucks, <laughs> I would buy some milk. I would be day one if it were 100 bucks. Yeah, I sure. would consider it and maybe get it a little later if it's 150. But if it was 100 bucks, I would. I had already pre-ordered it. That's yeah, crazy. 100 if, bucks. If it's, that's awesome. Since it's sitting at 200, I just can't justify that kind of spend. Well, and I think the Bathbone controller at 100 dollars is overpriced. I do too. Yes. Yeah. So I, do too. I haven't yeah. bought that yet. So if I'm not going to pay 100 for that, I'm not going to. Jonathan pay in our group is totally happy with screen. his setup. He probably has a really nice screen. It probably displays yeah. in a high definition. You know, yeah. if that works for him and it already yeah. works, then. You know, it's good that there's options out there, is, is, is what I'm saying. So, yeah, no, I yeah. agree with that. Um, all right, well, that's all I've got for, for headlines. Um, we can jump into uh, our quick hits to wrap things up. We'll start with Kyle this time. Um, Hi, Kyle, what anything else you've been playing? Anything amazing, amazing that you've been loving? Boy, <laughs> amazing that I've been loving. I could it has I to be 90% P, only 10%. No, N. this is going to be 99% uh, N, N urgy. Um, Kyle's mm, just going to get off the top mm-hmm, of the mm-hmm. He's just going um, to. <laughs> so uh, these are all Game Pass games. I was like, I just want to clear out all the games I haven't gotten to this year or that are on Game Pass that have released this year or whatever. So let me just run past these. I'm not going to take too long. I know we're going long already. Um, I'll start off positive Easter, Eastern Exorcist. Fun. That's a good cool game, game if you like side scrollers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick that up. You know, great, it's pretty great fun. Art style. Very cool art style, absolutely. Uh Jeff and I played Everspace 2 when he was in town. It was a big bowl of no. Unstall uninstalled that one. Negative. Not, sorry. Not not uh, a very responsive, like from what just, I gathered. Yeah. It just, just didn't not, feel good to play and yeah. uh, just no. Um, there's better space shooters out there. Go no. Yeah. Play yeah. like Chorus was even better. Or the Star Wars Squad. Chorus is are, cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or yeah. Resogun. Still still the best PS4 game. All right, Colin. All right. Colin. Okay, Colin Mortiarty. <laughs> yeah. All right. Colin. <laughs> um, a game called Infinite Guitars. I installed that in seconds. That's a no. Yeah. That's a negative. Uh, sorry, oh, this is going to make people. Oh, yeah. That's a didn't like that one. Sorry. Did you, have you played it? No, but I remember seeing some stuff and it looked. It's cool. a weird like turn-based RPG with guitars. I, no, it was a no for me. Yeah. Oh, that's um, cool. this might pe- piece people off. Sorry, uh, Planet of Lana. No, super oh, no. no. The wow. biggest of no's. <laughs> Absolutely no. no. Uninstalled that one. Uh, <laughs> didn't even try it. it. Didn't Keep even going. try it. I like this. Uh, this is good. Far totally World Pioneers. Uh, immediately, I, I saw it was Terraria. I played that game already. No, no, I uninstalled that one. <laughs> no. Um, McPixel 3, the very first thing you do in this game is you poop. It's like a, it, it, it feels like Mario. So this yes. is a yes, but I uninstalled this immediately. <laughs> okay. But it's a yes, check it out. Uh, it's a yes. Uh, the Last it's Case of yes. Benjamin Fox, uh, so no. Ugh. Which one? What? Uh, last Case of Benjamin Fox, such a no. Yeah, oh, Benedict I didn't Fox, like that's it not either. a good game. Yeah, yeah didn't, didn't like, like that game at all. Absolutely not. Uh, Quake we 2. We actually didn't I, talk about it a lot either. We, on we, the show. I, only, we all, I think we played it like for a few minutes. Derek, you and I probably that same week. It just is not a good game. Um, no. But go ahead. Oh. Okay. Uh, Quake 2. I get it. I don't like these games. That's a no for me. <laughs> uh, I get, I get it. it though. How, how yeah, the... it feels as old as it was. Really yeah. cool uh, remaster, though. Like, it yeah, looks I was going to really say good. the facelift of it. I was, I was hoping. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Chain Deck goes. Yeah. I like yeah. that game. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Sweet. I, I, that's staying. I'm gonna play that one. Yeah. All right, uh, Bramble the Mountain King. You ready, guys? Please, I really like it. it. Yeah, this is a yes. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's, it's a yes all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's was, staying. I was that's on the system. For a no. Yeah, I was really Um, Woo Long, more like so long. Uninstalled that bad. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Um, oh, negative. Oh. What a what an awful video game. I hated it. I hated how it felt. Hated how it looked. <laughs> Absolutely no. Oh my god! Uh, atomic Heart, more like Atomic <laughs> Fart. Uninstall yeah, that. Yeah, there we go. This game yeah, is yeah. so. What does it think it is? Like it. It, it feels Bad. like it's okay. really interesting. Try, try cool. playing it for eight hours. Cool opening though. Cool opening, <laughs> right? I mean, kind of, but not as cool as any other game it's trying to imitate. Oh, so like, it fair. didn't hook me in like, like uh, the Sky Slug World it. did in Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. You know, like oh, I'm already in. Yeah. 
here I don't care. Everyone's comrade this, comrade that. Such a no game. Uninstalled, yeah, get out of enough. here. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, more like Texas Fart Box. No, uninstalled. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> no? that one through, yeah, I'm out of here. I'm out on that game. Such a okay. bad game. Um, Such a bad game. <laughs> no. Uh, all right, uh, and that's really it. I I, I was watching. Oh, I uh, want you to keep going. This is a good. No, time. that was all. That was like ten games, guys. That's all. I, that's all I had time there for. There was so. a lot of N there. There was a lot of negatives. Like hey, Chain it. Chaos and Bramble. Right, I needed more. I, I needed like the more Chain Chaos. Chaos. I'm so psyched that about Bramble necklace. because to me, I mean, granted, there's more stealth elements in that one, uh, and it's more. I don't know. It's more actively, yes. narratively weaving something together. But uh, uh, that and Planet of Lana, like I, I kind of played those in close succession and playing it a lot i stuck with because i was kind of like well it's a little puzzly kind of similar to brambles puzzles a little bit and it's stealthy a little bit sometimes but it is slower paced so it's kind of like all right yeah brambles a better I game know. i agree with that actually brambles yeah uh, brambles got a better vibe to me yeah, yeah it's got the like nordic vibe too that's like clearly yeah based yeah on it's really like dour game. and yeah. dark and right. i, I yeah, almost more. rage quit at the gnome counting game i was like i'm about to lose it <laughs> Uh, but the second I got beyond that, I was one of the only times you have to do something like that. Yeah, I was <laughs> deep in that that negativity space. Boy, yeah, I, I was an <laughs> angry person all morning. Also like, like, and, and then something maybe, happens. You know later what? Everyone was right about Game like... Pass. It sucks. It's, look at all these bad games. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> then something happens later with the gnomes that you're like, can you do that in a video game? Like this is very yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is not cool. By the way, if you've got a bunch of gnomes following you. Don't walk into the bear traps. It's disturbing. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, so, even if you walk near them, they can so get walk like, into the bear traps. into them. And it's like, they'll no, walk into like, them anyway. I tried. I tried saying, to save them. They'll walk into I'm them. I'm not saying this is what Kyle is doing, but just being serious, like, this is actually why I personally don't like Game Pass and I don't use it that often, is because unless I buy something, I have no patience for it, and I immediately just go, all right, screw this. Like, Same. Yeah, I, 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 I said that about yeah. Armored Core, but because I paid for it, you bet your ass I'm going to go back to it, and I'm going to yeah. try to figure it out. There, but if I got that game job. for free, I would be hard knowing that shit. Yeah, and get yeah. no, I, I feel that in a big way, for sure. You know, a yeah, lot of these games, like Planet of Lana, maybe I play a little longer because I paid 25 bucks for it, but because like I'm not immediately oh, vibing fair. with it, and I have a list of games to get to, it's easy for that's, me to just move That's fair, because I beat yeah. it on... No, wait. Was it on Xbox? No, it was Game or? Pass. It was oh. on Game Pass. Yeah, I thought I paid yeah. for it. All right. Derek, okay. you said a phrase earlier that I think really does work because you said about EA Play Pro, but I think it works for Game Pass too. It's essentially a rental service. And so you're paying yeah, for access sure. to these games that you're yep. getting temporary access to. And it's either temporary because at some point you'll stop paying for it or because at some point they'll take it away from the service or whatever. So um, that's really what it is. And so if you're not getting value out of that rental price, certainly. We're we're gonna call these segments the uh, the no show, like or the, like what gets a no from Kyle? Yeah, right. Yeah, no. I'll I need, try and do this. I'll try and do this as often as possible. I'll need to make I, like a little stamp a animation, yeah. no or yes. no. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Sound effects. Yeah, I love it. Uh, Jeff, what about you? You got any responses to any did, of those? Did you have anything you were watching, Kyle? I thought you were about to say something. Oh no, I I was just gonna say I I I started up Outlaw Star, which is an anime I really like. So I bought it on Blu-ray. I'm what, watching whatever. that, so whatever. One of the greatest animes ever, period. Uh, yeah, and um, I'm also uh, watching a little indie weird movie called John Dies at the End. And it's just oh, a yeah, weird movie. That. Yeah, It's just super <laughs> weird. And I've been in a really weird mood, so it's like really matching my vibe lately. So Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That was pretty It's just decent. a bizarre, like, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's fun. It's a really fun movie. Yeah. Hey, he does. Right. He dies at the end, everybody. Hey, guess what? Actually, kind of dies <laughs> in the middle, so. Yeah, it's true. Uh, it's true. <laughs> what was the anime called? Spoiler. Uh, Outlaw Star. Outlaw oh, Outlaw. Star. Okay, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. All That's right, it. Jeffrey, over to you. Uh, all right. So I mentioned I play GT Seven. I got like five races in before the podcast. Um, I'm actually enjoying it. I'll probably be circling that in and out of Immortals of Avium, Immortals of uh, Evolva being my main. Immortals of Immortals of Marbles of Volva. What? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, sure. uh, I had to mention that Kyle mentioned well, this there. in the last episode but i was driving on the way to texas uh from colorado at the time but we beat streets of rage 4 together and good <laughs> lord oops on the game of the year conversation because that was <laughs> our bad on it would have made some categories at least like not game of the yeah. year maybe, but game. it's yeah. a great game a yeah great it game. was super fun and i loved uh hearing the the score and kyle's surround system where like the subwoofers behind the couch and it's just hearing that like it's like a weird 80s type of retro oh, yeah. score. It's really cool sometimes. Was it 2021? Or was that last year? I don't know. Was last remember. year? 
Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's 21. I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it's 21. Yeah, I'm pretty loved sure. It. Loved it. Anyway, loved it. Yes. That's like a yes. A way to look. That's a yes. <laughs> you keep that one. Yeah, keep that one. Uh, Bla- Bla- Do you pronounce it Blaz Blue or Blaze Blue? Blaze Blue? I don't know. Blaze you know, there's, no, uh, there's actually no way to know. Actually. Um, But there's no way to know. I'm not going to look it up. Um, But uh, Entropy Effect is their oh. newest one that came out. And it's the side scroller one that's kind of more like a, I don't want to say Metro, it's not a Metroidvania, but it's definitely like more like a, um, you you die and then you upgrade your shit each run. Like Hades, and maybe something like I don't know. Uh, but but it's like uh, there are some upgrades that stay with you just for that run and they'll expire when you die. It's that type of action game. The action does feel really good, but it's in early access, so there's some jank to it. Where like the sc- my computer's doing fine. I have the temperature lights on where it'll go blue or red if it gets a little too hot. The CPU. It's not getting hot at all, and the screen is like just janky during loading sometimes, um, or I'm not getting animations like at all. But other than that, like the action itself is quite fun, and I got to like the first boss, and he just obliterated me, and I was like, okay, that's enough of that diddle. So that was a that was a brief diddle of that one. Painful diddle. Painful. Um, I played a Sea of Stars demo. Um, I played enough of it. To know I'm gonna get it, like I like obviously yeah. it's, it's a Game Pass game, but I. <laughs> uh, By the way, Future Four was 2020. It looks like. Yeah, it really? was 20. I was just looking it up. It was oh, 2020. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, wow. yeah I definitely would have stood a shot, shot maybe in the in, a, in our overall ten then, because um, yeah. that was a kind of a busy year that actually, surprisingly. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, Sea of Stars was a uh, it's quite good. You know, Octopath got me some training for that one, of course, like in terms of like patience with the combat, that type of combat. Um, I understand it is like more of a retro feel than Octopath is, uh, but it, it's still like got enough going for it that I'm like, cool, I'm going to play this game. Um, and I want to see what the story is because it dumps you kind of in the middle in the demo. So I kind of I want to know how the hell I got there. Uh, <laughs> that's the thing I'm most curious about. I, lo- I love the way that, that and I'm obviously un- unintentionally going to be making comparisons with Chained Echoes, but I'm I'm just very curious how it's going to turn out. Um, yeah. I mean, visually, I do like it a bit better than Chained Echoes. It's a lot oh. more vibrant, and the line work is better. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that um, a lot better. But yeah. it is more. It, it, I mean, it's still a small team, but it is more individuals that worked on that game than Chained uh-huh. Echoes. So, cool. Well, yeah. I, you know, it, it, I only did like one fight, but and then the exploration is really what we're gonna end up doing the most. Uh, so I mean, I wanted to explore that whole town, and and all of that felt great. Uh, finding all the chests. There's actually like a that, documentary talking. for the game from the studio already. They got to let it. Yeah, they first. they basically gave the history of how the studio like came to be and like the they did the messenger first, so they kind of like spoke. Oh, to that, that game rules. Messenger yeah. rocks, yeah. dude. Um, yeah, and then like kind of their like what made them get into then doing this game, which is like I guess like even while they were working on the messenger, they're like, so like we want to work on an RPG, right? Like that's yeah. what we want to do. So that was like the natural step that Sweet. they wanted to kind of go into that. Mm. So. Well, cool. And I'm glad they they left in little like Final Fantasy 16 type elements where you can equip a story mode uh, like bracelet or something. Um, And it makes your health like way higher for each battle. Mm. Uh, And there's actually an auto block and auto parry um, uh, thing you can equip, too. But that's that's going too far for me. I like might take. I was going to say that's kind of like letting Luigi finish the Mario level for you. Yeah, it's like, (laughs) nah, that's a little too far for me. The fact that they put that there is like it it matters to me. Like, yeah, yeah, well, it's like that's that's good accessibility because the combat is going to be like somewhat like it's an homage to like uh, Super Mario RPG. You know, combined with kind of the the vibes of Chrono Trigger, because that there's more interactivity with the combat in Super Mario RPG. You're actually like timing uh, button prompts to To do additional damage and take less damage. Okay, so that's kind of like that was the inspiration for them with the combat in that game. Did I still remember like kicking the shell up in the air and then kicking it forward? Like it feels so good. Yeah, Yeah. it feels so good. Yeah, man. Uh, So another demo I played was called Stop Dead. Uh, It's kind of got a, it's kind of trying to do a neon white thing where you're just speed running through levels. and But the catch is with this one, whereas Neon White, you can kind of demonstrate some patience and figure out a level first and then be like, okay, here's how I'm going to speed run this one and then try it over and over again until you get a really good time or until you beat Tim and Dan's time or, or sometimes Kyle's times. Uh, <laughs> so Which, like, I mean, I beat all your times. So, yeah. uh, whatever, cheater. Um, so I'll stop see you are the, catch, this year. <laughs> the catch with Stop Dead is, is, is if you stop momentum at all, you die. So like you have to keep oh. moving and killing people um and and uh it's not so much you're collecting cards that you discard uh or anything like that but but it's 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 more movement based and i think you do at some point get guns but i didn't play the demo that far to figure that out 
whatever. There's a demo. Just go try it. Um, another demo I played was Chance wow. of Chance of Sinar. Yeah, Der- it's a Derek game for sure. Uh, Chance of Sin- Sinar? Sinar? I don't know how to say it, but um, I, th- I think it's going to... I think it's going to be a Game Pass game, but this is a puzzle game that's kind of more like it's kind of more like you're walking on levels of like an MC Escher painting or something where mm-hmm. it, there's like a really cool perspective to it and the animation style is kind of like it's early 90s animation. Um, and the puzzle element, it's a straight up puzzle game. So this is a Kyle no for sure. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I'm already zoned out. Yeah. <laughs> but the uh, the cool puzzle <laughs> element to me is like you discover hieroglyphics and stuff, um, but you're not told what they mean. Uh, so you kind of have to figure out along the way what they mean. And eventually you're given a chance to hard define them, like what each word means. But, uh, that helps you solve other puzzles. And sometimes you'll run into other characters and they'll speak hieroglyphics at you or whatever. And you kind of have to go, huh, what are they saying? And some of the words you might already know. Um, so that's a cool element of it. Um, I like that one. Um, it's a Derek no for sure. Uh, so I, w- I rewatched MacGruber with Kyle and I still think about it and laugh to myself. The TV show. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. still laugh about it. Uh, and then I stumbled upon another Will Forte sketch of him doing a spelling bee uh, from SNL. And it's the same type of hot rod Lonely Island humor where they're repeating a joke where he asks, uh, I think Chris Parnell is doing the spelling bee like administrator stuff. And he's like, spell the word business. And Will Forte asks all the questions to delay answering. Um, so it takes him like a good two minutes before he starts spelling business. And he's just like, B. Q R N and he just goes on for three minutes listening to all these letters <laughs> where like the joke is not funny so dumb. it's funny again and then it's not funny again. and it's That's like family yeah. guy does that too it's my yeah. favorite yeah. type of humor dude it really is uh anyway um as far as these are two new things on netflix i watched as well uh the untold series came back with like a new volume of episodes um they're kind of like movies i guess but this is like a sports docuseries and this season, they talked about Jake it's like Paul. like 30 for 30, but... Yeah, 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 exactly. But it's like they're allowed to say fuck or whatever. So whatever. Uh, <laughs> that's like the only difference, really. That it's makes it better. <laughs> uh, but this season, they talked about Jake Paul, Johnny Football. I can't remember the third one, but I know the last one was a mini series about uh, the Tim Tebow and... Um, Mostly Urban, Urban Meyer. Meyer, right? Like, uh, Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. But it's just about Florida... University of the Florida. Gators, like it, yeah. it's just about the Gators, and that's it. They stopped short of saying why Urban Meyer got fired from the Jacksonville Jaguars. They stopped short of saying what happened to Tim Tebow at like Denver and like what happened with his pro career. Mm-hmm. They stopped short of all that stuff. So like that's kind of a bummer. Like I wish they covered that, but at the same time, you wouldn't have been able to get interviews if you did that. Uh, so they're apparently starting to plan one with Jerry Jones because I think people are realizing, hey, these are ooh. great ways to recover some PR if we work it with seems them on like this. It. Like, yeah. Can, like it's get more yeah, money because look at look at how they handled Johnny Football and Jake Paul. They weren't really sure. They talked about some of the problematic stuff, but like the fact that the guys actually got interviewed for that tells you that they really didn't grill them over it. You know, like yeah. mm-hmm. uh, like Johnny Football still sucks. Uh, Jake Paul still sucks as people. I mean, uh, but you know so what I, I liked about I mean it was, this was an untold story, but like when when they released the Last Dance of Michael Jordan, like he of course yeah. is interviewed for. They must have interviewed him for days to get all that those hours of footage that they ended up hours. using. Hours, yeah. Um, and so it's a full. But 10 I thought episode it did thing. such yeah. a beautiful job of like, <laughs> hey, this guy. One of his biggest strengths is also one, literally one of his biggest weaknesses, and that's his competitive spirit. And it just yeah. it wrecked some stuff in his life too. So like, I don't yeah. know. I liked that kind of. Yeah, and I, I feel like story, people but. that might have their own opinions already formed about people that are controversial, like Jake Paul and jo- Johnny Football, they're going to go into it and go, man, that they kind of handled those guys with kid gloves a little bit. But also, they let them be their raw, true self to the point where the viewer can't help but go, yeah, they still suck. Like, the viewer's going to be able to yeah, figure out the on their own. Also, the didn't take away Johnny Manziel's Heisman, even though he did exactly what Reggie Bush did. And Reggie Bush still doesn't have his Heisman back. But whatever. It's totally normal. Whatever. Totally it's fine. fine. It's totally yeah. fine, guys. Totally fine. Um, I can't remember the third I think one. They, they couldn't him. catch him, though. They didn't, like, legally have evidence or whatever. It's like in the uh, documentary. They took it away from Reggie way after. Whatever. It's stupid. I know. It's, I'm just saying they didn't yeah. have evidence. I don't. I'm struggling to remember what the third one was. Oh, the third one was about uh, steroids and baseball and the guy that was, like, behind... Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the main guy, like the main company that was behind like Sa- uh, Sammy Sosa and all those guys. Oh, dang. And uh, and how like 
he was the only one that was like put behind bars for it and everybody or not behind bars, but had to pay at least a fine, like a huge fine. And everybody else like Sammy Sosa and all those guys were like fine. Um, what's the other Barry? Is it Barry Bonds? Is that Mark the other? McGuire? Yeah, yeah. McGuire, those guys. Barry Bonds. Barry yeah, Bonds. baseball is a little less interesting for me to watch docu series of documentaries yeah. of, but I mean football and stuff like I don't even pay attention to NCAA like on any level. Uh, yeah. Boxing, all that stuff. Like I'm, I'm watching quarterback too on Netflix. Yeah, uh, that's a good one. That's it's it's cool that they got like. Pretty pretty unfiltered access to those guys. Those guys are mic'd the whole game, yeah. Um, it, by the Netflix crew, and you can hear everything Patrick Mahomes and all them are saying. It just further solidified Patrick Mahomes is like the currently like the best quarterback in the league to me. Yeah. Like it's just his his workout prep stuff is insane. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. I saw that. I just finished that episode of the ABC days, and the Crazy. C day is full speed everything, and yes. I'm just like no, immediately no, and. Uh, <laughs> And it made me like uh, grateful that I don't have the instincts or the desire to be anything in football because quarterback especially is like, man, these guys just get beat the hell up. Like they are target the whole game and they're expected to do it again in six days. Or and less. they have to memorize everyone's position and like, yes. like the names of plays yes. that they go over in quarterback to me was very yeah. high. Too. At the yeah. same time, Patrick will show this uh, shows his this, this side of himself. He has to be like commend other players like on good plays and stuff because he's like, I just want people to like me and stuff. And I'm like, yeah. this guy's got he's got the right idea, but some people are going to hate you no matter what. I mean, yeah, he's saying they'll, they'll hit you less hard if they kind of like you on the other yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true, I guess, to some degree. Um, and the last movie I wanted to mention is on Netflix. It's brand new. I, I'm surprised I liked it at all. It, it's a week of surprises for me, I guess. There's a new Adam Sandler movie on Netflix, oh. but. He's not the star. It's uh, mm-hmm. his daughters are the star. His his youngest yeah. daughter is a star, and it's like a coming of age kind of Jewish movie called uh, "You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah." <laughs> this <laughs> is, is it not his the right real life daughters that are acting. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and his <laughs> wife is in it too, but she plays like the mother of a best friend or something like that, which is weird. I'm like, why would you put the, your wife in this at all? Because she looks like your kids, sure, like, and vice versa. Like, I don't know why you do that. Anyway. Um, yeah. I nice. found it to be really, it's actually kind of funny, like, but in an awkward humor way. Like, it wasn't like, Sandler does have a screaming scene where he's, like, reprimanding his daughter. Um, mm. Play his daughters in the movie, too. Um, but uh, Does he go to Applebee's scene. at any point in the movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> he, he ate them all, pal. He, he ate them all, pal. pal. He doesn't give him five out of six chicken fingers, pal. <laughs> uh, but uh, his, his, his daughters have this, like, I don't know, this more of, like, an awkward, understated sense of humor. And it totally works for this movie. Um, hmm. And I wouldn't have suspected that, you know, I mean, but I guess, you know, that shows that times are changing and being loud is not. That was a 90s brand of comedy. And now it's more about being awkward and uh, stuff like that. And then uh, he took a picture with everyone on the set and they all pretended to punch each other in the penis. <laughs> and the penises. <laughs> yeah. Right. If that, those are all bits from Doozy. That it's so yeah. because they make Will Sasso read a bunch of reviews of Applebee's from around the country as Adam Sandler. As, and it's, as we all know, Adam Sandler is Adam a huge, Sandler's a huge fan. fan of Applebee's. We yeah, all know he's this. been to every single one of the project <laughs> country. Yeah. It's I so love stupid. Applebee's. Uh, I've never been there one time. Yeah. All right, Derek. Dude, other you got to get their pretzels. I doubt, I doubt anything. I, I literally would rather never eat again. <laughs> Applebee's is so good. Applebee's has good food. Is I mean, it like Bennigan's? Ton, is that what Applebee's is? Like a Bennigan's? It's, it's like, or like it's a like Chili's. Chili's. It's a Chili's. Yeah. It's like a direct yeah, competition to Chili's. Which also, but if, you go, if you go after 10 o'clock, all their apps are half priced and their pretzels are legit. That's because they don't want to throw away all the food that's been sitting out for a while. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so they make that, a lot of really money. exciting and then not exciting. Um, I, I've, had a, I've had a couple of their burgers that I thought were actually quite good. It's not like my go to place for burgers. but like I have always said Chili's has a really good burger, which is like you wouldn't think that yeah, like that place do. would be I good at all. I've been there in years. So I still I don't like know the Chili's like fajita platter. Like you just get all the fixes and. Yeah. Anyway, my family used to be a Chili's. Spot. My family used to be a Chili's family, and by that I mean my dad worked at Chili's home office uh, for oh. like 18 years. Oh. So we ate free food there a lot, and yeah. then I worked there uh, for four more years. And my dad had left like three months after I started. Mm. It was because I started there. He was like, "I can't do this anymore." No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this. I hate the food. So, I hate. I hate my son. Hate the company. <laughs> I've had to- like a total of twenty son. plus years of free Chili's food, and I haven't been there since then. Mm. Oh, that makes that something makes instilled sense. in me. That that makes sense. Sense. There's something instilled in me that made me never go to Applebee's because that was a direct competitor. Yeah, they're your enemy. I that get was it. The enemy. Sure. Yeah. It's weird. Can't go to any of them, pal. You can't go to any of them, pal. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, Derek, what they, you been playing? They, they drive by it, and Jeffrey's like, but an Applebee's is right. Dad's like, no! Okay, Jeff, no, just not, keep we're not you. Uh, <laughs> pulls over, get out. <laughs> the, the only uh, update I have, I, I wasn't on last week's show, is just BG. Boulder Gates 3. I mean, I've watched stuff and all Still that stuff, but none it, of it's in... Yeah, I'm what? saying it the way I want to say it. Balders. Um, Balders. Um, Balders. But uh, I just got to... I'm at the entrance of Act 3. So I haven't actually wow. walked through the door. It like lets you know, hey, you might want to clean things up before you go through this Frame. this area. Um, but I, I'm over 40 hours in... Um, the game is i mean i've obviously talked about it in the chat and stuff like that the game is phenomenal it's it's easily my game of the year i'm not even like trying to hide it and be like woo woo see words uh, no like starfield and all these other games that are coming out they have a shot i'm not going to sit here and say they don't have a shot but it would be really really hard for them to surpass this because this game is just doing Everything that I love about games, it's doing it all in one, and it's doing it at a level I've never experienced. And I've talked about it in the past podcasts, so I don't want to bore people with just repeating myself, but like the new stuff I hit, like the choices and how they keep coming back in the, in, in the games, like reminding you of the decisions you made. Like I'll give this as an example, because I think I can do it without spoiling it. But, like, there's this huge choice, and it's technically a side quest for one of your side characters. But honestly, as I finished it, I was like, how is this a side quest? I mean, I guess you could do it without like not doing feeling. this. Mm. But, like, so there's there's this significant choice that you make to either rescue this character or not, right? I decided to rescue this character. Well, the end of Act 2... You, that character that I rescue plays a huge part in the boss fight. Like, a huge part. We're not talking, like, swoops in and knocks off one HP. Like, I'm going, how would I fight these these bosses without this character? And I could have done that. I don't know what the replacement is. I don't know if the game replaces it with something mm-hmm. else. I don't know. But it's such a unique experience because it's, like... We've been promised for 20 plus years, your choices matter. And for the most part, you would always see like little things. But at the end of the day, there was the most stories were always scripted. And I know this game to a certain extent has a general story story that you're playing through. But there's so many decisions that truly, truly matter. Mm -hmm. Um, And everybody's at risk of dying. Like I've already lost one of my main characters. I also had a huge crush on a character that's not in my party, but I could have, like, probably romanced her. I think she's available to be romanced. She died, so she's gone. Um, And I was actually upset about it to the point where I was like, do I reload? Should I reload? How far back do I have to reload? (laughs) Here's why I didn't reload. Because she died in the worst fight I've had in this entire game. And then I watched other YouTube videos after I beat it where every single person said the same thing. This is easily easily the hardest fight in the entire game. So even though I'm playing on easy, you're outnumbered like... I want to say it's probably 20 to 25 enemies versus your eight or nine people that are fighting against it. And they all get two to three hits at a time, whereas only two of my characters get two hits at a time. Mm -hmm. So it's outnumbered not only in the amount of characters trying to kill you, but you're outnumbered in how many times they can swing at you or shoot things at you. A lot of them are um, mages, so they'll like, they'll just range attack. Something that screws you over. Like, to start the battle, I, the first time I was doing it, I was like, dude, I'm kicking these people's butts. Like, I'm wiping out a lot of people because I've got pretty strong characters. And then a mage just walks in and just, like, lights the floor on fire and burns all my <laughs> characters. And I'm like, fuck my life, dude. And then I redid it. I re-rolled, retried, and thought I was doing good with a different strategy. Same thing happened. They found a different strategy to wipe the floor out of me to the point where I had to go, okay, I'm playing this game on easy. I don't think I can beat this fight. Like, I literally didn't think I could beat it. I had lost five times. And when I say I lost five times, I'm not talking like I lost five minutes in. 
This is a 40 minute battle. Yeah, I this, this reminds every, me of like Fire Emblem. I was just yeah. going to say Fire Emblem. Yeah. Yeah. I lost every time 30 <laughs> to 35 minutes into the battle. So I was getting very frustrated. And I was like, I don't know how to do this. And there was no guides on YouTube telling me how to do it any differently. And so I then decided to explore a little. How is this your game of the year? Then that sounds so frustrating. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> so then I decided to explore a different a- a way, and you still have to fight the same amount of enemies, but because I went in a different way, I ended up separating everybody, um, and that was a little bit easier. But still, I lost. I lost a couple people in my party. I healed them, but I lost them. Uh, and then I lost the lady that I had a crush on. She was dead, dead. I couldn't heal her. Um, and then I just made the decision. I'm like, hey, this is like my sixth try. I'm not going to replay this. Just She's just to... gone. She's gone. And I, and I kind of liked it because I was like, you know what? I know you want to control everything, but maybe you have to let this go. Maybe you have to let yeah. this go and let this person die. So anyways, that's... M- some of the reasons why this game continues to just hook me to where I'm like, I I need to see what's next. And I'm not even in the biggest area. Act three is where it opens up to even a bigger, like not only story wise, but it's like a bigger area, more characters, more legendary weapons, more enemies, more everything. So I'm really curious to see how this plays out. I have a feeling the, Third act is going to take the longest, um, which means I'm definitely not going to beat this before Starfield. I'm still going to play Starfield when it launches, but I don't think I'm going to fully commit to it not because, no. yeah, I need I need to finish Baldur's Gate. I, I think it's one of the, the greatest games to ever be created. So. I, don't, I don't know if you've experienced this or uh, or talked about this already, but I saw a clip on TikTok of a guy that was like, I pissed off a wizard through conversation and he turned me into a wheel of cheese and he's literally just rolling his character around <laughs> on the screen. That's not happened to me. I did I did kill a couple a of bosses. One I had them suicide themselves. I convinced Oof. them the best option was to suicide themselves. Jesus. Wow. And the the other one was uh and the game drops a little hint. Well, this one, it's a, it's, I mean, you have to be dumb not to be able to figure out what the game's trying to get you to do, especially if you know what type of game you're playing. But like, there's this a villain, and these, when I say they're bosses, these guys have a lot of HP. Like, they'll mm-hmm. wreck you. So they're giving you an option. You can either fight them, which you can on easy. I can beat some of these. Um, or you can take the easy way and just have a conversation with them and see if you can convince them to do things. So on this one, and, it takes the luck of your dice as well. Right. But on this one in particular, this character's really fat and he's drinking alcohol. And I keep I keep faking that I'm drinking alcohol with him because he's like, I'll tell you more if you drink with me. So I'm like drinking, but I'm not drinking. But you have to roll every time. Right. So I was rolling. Um, I was lucky and passed all my rolls. And it's and by the way, it's not guaranteed you're gonna pass every roll. Sure. It, it's it dependent on your characters. They're yeah, certain some are tough. Yes, yeah, some of them are really high, and if I don't have the bonuses, I'm like, well, this is impossible. Um, but I still happen to have the ability to beat this guy by wow. drinking him literally to death. I'm not gonna tell you how he died, wow. but he he exposed himself, and he was a done deal. And I was like. Oh, cool. And I get all his stuff. I looted all his stuff and went into his back room, <laughs> looted everything back there. So that's the stuff I love that I'm just like, dude, this game literally is just like, you can do whatever you want. Just anything's anything. It's up yeah. to your, like, as long as you can think of it, you could probably do it, you know? Yeah. So this, awesome. this year's stupid, it's, dude. It's so dumb. <laughs> it's just so dumb. So I, I share all that in hopes that I know all of you are interested, but even in yeah. our listeners, yeah. if this is a game where you're like, CRPGs are not my game. Well, CRPGs aren't my game either. But this is a game where if you put it on easy mode, What's a CRPG? just, huh? What's a CRPG? Uh, crap. Crap. What's, what's C stand for? I, I know it's. I know that is the term. I can't remember. I, what I've, it's I've heard it thrown around to describe this too, and I'm. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. Computer, it's just stands for computer role playing game. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Oh, okay. Um. But anyways, it's that people. I'm hoping people listen to this and go, okay, CRPGs aren't my style, 
but I'm going to give this one a shot. Uh, based off the story, character, choices, all that. And then I think you will realize that CRPGs are actually fun. They Mm. are actually fun. Like, I enjoy the battles because I enjoy uh, trying to figure out new ways to kill people. And then I'm also slowly learning. Like, I'm getting better and going, oh, now I can figure out how to use these spells. Like, there's a certain spell that I didn't know I had that's extremely powerful. Like, I plop. I just I, I do the spell, I plop it right in between enemies, and it's basically this guardian uh, knight. And anytime the enemy moves, the guardian knight hits him. Anytime they attack the the enemy attacks the guardian knight, the guardian attacks them. So if they do anything in its in its path, no matter which one, it's not it it doesn't go based off turns. If it's their turn and they do anything, it, it hits them back. And it's extremely powerful because it hits them hard. And the enemy, by the way, can drop those Guardian Knights on you. And when they do them, it's absolutely annoying because you can't move. <laughs> you can't do anything. You're mm. you're screwed. Um, but anyway, so I've absolutely enjoyed this game. I'm looking forward to hopefully beating it in the next couple weeks. But it, it is a game that I was obviously excited for, but I I still did not think it was going to be. You probably thought you were going to play it for a little bit and then sideline it until later. Right. Yeah, I mean, I played the 12 hours. Yeah. I played the the 12 hours, and I knew I thought it was good, but I was like, I won't be surprised if this is a game that I just play a little bit, and I'm like, I'm not going to finish it. It's not that big of a deal. But now it's like, I must finish this. I must see it. And the plot, which I'm not even talking to you guys about, the plot's great. It, it gives you reasons to want to keep moving forward, but it's hard to move forward because there's so many other su- subplots that you care about. Like these yeah. these people that you start to care about that they're like, hey, I need you to do this. Not, hey, go find me this because I, I want you to. They're, this game, we're not uh... talking about pointless stuff. We're talking about like in Act 1, I meet this girl and her parents. I save them like from something that was happening in Act 1. In Act 2, I see the girl. Again, she's like, my mom and dad are missing. Promise me you'll find my mom and dad, and I will teach you this or give you something that you want from her. So I go and find out about her mom and dad because like, I actually care about them. I met them before. I'm, I'm curious what happened to them. And then I find out, and then there's a benefit to finding out what happens to them. Like, it's all connected really well that it's not just fetch quests just for the sake of keeping you guys busy. It's stuff, like, you're going to actually care about. Nice. Um, so, really well done, really well written, definitely game of the year worthy. I was yeah. I was going to say, actually, speaking of, like, game of the year and the game awards, actually, uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to wreck, uh, wreck shop this year. Like... I don't, yeah. it doesn't, I look at the rest of the calendar and I'm like, sure, but what is giving you this many options compared to Baldur's Gate 3, like in the game itself? I think Starfield just, is the only one. I don't Starfield, know. Starfield, Tears of the King, I think Tears of the King is going to get hurt by the fact that we played Breath of the Wild before. So even though I personally, and I know a lot yeah, of Yeah, I thought Reed Zelda was agreed. the shoe in like winner for sure. Tears of the of, King of, of a lot of casual better than It was Breath when it came out and then other yeah. games came out. Yeah, <laughs> sure. I but this one I could Kingdom. see winning like a ton of writing stuff too and like oh, game I direction. Think that, and, like, I think that it's yeah. locked up, but I think yeah. Starfield has a shot. I think Tears of the Kingdom has a shot. And then I, I'd be surprised if Baldur's Gate doesn't win a lot just because right. I think it's one. It's kind of like a darling. Two, like nobody saw. Uh, Man Two. I I think that I'm gonna love good. it, I but I think it's gonna get game of the year. Tony Todd's gonna have to like. I don't know. It would get nominated for a lot. I, I, I don't know if it pulls ahead. There'll probably exactly. be some clever Maybe some like action. Uh, yeah, there'll be some be clever, clever category. award award sharing yeah. to make sure. That, I, like, yeah. Zelda yeah. gets adventure and and Final <laughs> Fantasy 16 yeah. gets action and you know what yeah. I mean. They'll, they'll oh my god! I didn't even mention Final Fantasy 16, which I absolutely love. That's yeah. stupid. So yeah, this year's stupid. dumb. What a yeah. dumb year. Yeah, I see. I can't help but have that take after right, especially right. seeing what the fall has. Lined I, I do up think this could be a year where we see and maybe not. But I feel like there's going to be a number of these like, well, at least this game, which is my personal favorite, got this win because there's yeah. too many other games that have to share the awards. There's just too yeah, many. Absolutely. It's too many. Um, All right, Dan, what about you? What else? What are you what are you playing uh, this week? Anything of note? I mean, I I uh, was playing uh, well as Armored Core, 
And I'm trying. I'm trying to like think because I, I basically did you finish Xeno Gears? No, not yet. Um, okay. which I actually so I took a a small break this week. I did a uh, Super Mario 64, nice. um, because I started yeah. Super Mario 64 during my 12 hour stream that I did, my one year anniversary. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna take a break because I did two weeks in a row of Xeno Gears, so I'm gonna do Mario 64. Uh, we're up to 73 stars out of 120. We're going Good for, for the 120. Yeah. yeah, we're going yeah. for the 120. You have almost um, got I, enough to beat the game if you wanted to, right? Don't you? Need oh, to... I did. So I did beat the game actually. Oh, you, okay. You um, have more than enough. Yep. Okay. Yep. Right. So I beat Final Bowser, but obviously we're going to circle back around and I'm going to go for the 120. So. By the way, that boss fight, the Bowser boss fight in Mario 64, was like nothing I'd ever seen before. The, like the I way know. they really used the 3D space because that yeah. was like unheard of. It's so brilliant. Uh, yeah. Back in the day. And it's um. Yeah, you know, when you when you face Bowser the other two times, it's like, all right, well, this is like at, at that time, this is a little challenging, but you only have to get him once. But in the mm-hmm. final one, it's like you have to get him three times. And you have to keep hitting the explosives. Otherwise, he'll just jump right back on. Yeah. But then also after because you got to get him three times on the on the explosives on the mm-hmm. final round. But um, mm-hmm. before that third explosion, he, he basically breaks up the, f- the floor. So it looks like a star. So yeah. the whole arena suddenly turns into a star. The ground starts like falling down. So, you know, if you're standing two in one of those sections, then you just lose. So um, and then you have to aim at him on one of the bombs that's kind of floating out there. But. Uh, yeah, it's it's a really it's been a really fun uh, trip down nostalgia lane. But man, that camera, dude, Whew. the problem <laughs> that, that camera yeah, is a problem. I didn't, on that I didn't like it when I was a kid. I'm definitely not gonna like it <laughs> yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it's just what we we just kind of accepted it, right? Because it was sure. what it was. Well, no other uh, game did 3D like that, so we were like, right. well, this is we how didn't 3D have cameras Kotaku work. to tell us that it was trash. We didn't have sure. that. Sure, <laughs> just had to like, like it. I wonder what they think like, now. This is how 3D cameras work, and then over time, as other games and Nintendo included started to really improve. Oh, this is how it could work. Yeah, though. like Kotaku yeah, at, and, and in those years was that dumbass that's at our lunch table spouting bad takes. We all we all had that one <laughs> that guy. Dumbass at our lunch. Yeah, like, but nobody liked that about, one bro? guy, and so nobody took him serious. Yeah, now. Yeah. For some reason, that one guy has turned into now like a billion in power. And one guy. Yeah. It was the same yeah. with GoldenEye 64. I thought, oh, this is the only way that console first-person shooters could ever be controlled. This is the best right. way. And, sure. and of course, Strafing. and then, and then eventually yeah. we got a second analog second. I was like, oh, oh right. There's this so makes... many bad takes online. Like, for instance, I saw today, I saw a guy who bought Baldur's Gate 3 on uh, Steam Deck. He doesn't have a regular PC or whatever, mm-hmm. and he's like, why does this game look like a PS2 game on my on my Steam Deck, like on a big screen TV? And I'm because he's docking it. I'm like, sure, you're you're docking it on a Steam Deck. It's a like a low end PC when you do that. It's like a low end PC. Yeah. I play it on. I just played five hours on my Steam Deck. It's first of all, it's not that pretty on Steam Deck. Okay, at 800p. Mm-hmm. Imagine trying to play it at 1080p or 4k or something like that you'd have to drop all the settings to beyond low and it probably would barely move at like 25 to 30 frames per second what is your expectations like that's the stuff where i doesn't like, understand technology probably what? he's probably that's just like what Whoa. it is like i'm like just play it you bought the steam deck just play it on the deck just play it where it's at <laughs> yeah um but yes, yeah, that's just been it's been fun uh revisiting that and then i still have like the the last couple of levels there does that clock level i don't know oh, if yeah. you, if you yeah, remember yeah. the clock one because mm-hmm. i remember that one there, there was a lot of middle levels there that i was like i don't really i don't really like remember this that well um because i hadn't played this like since you know i was a kid i, I haven't well, actually I fell done, so like, many times on the cl- stupid clock level yeah, <laughs> clock level yeah. stuff and then there's a rainbow something level which i don't even remember at all um is that so when you do a lot of the flying with the hats so you come up i don't even remember dude but in the chat, somebody was like, yeah, so, man, looking forward to the rainbow world or whatever. And I was like, I don't even remember that. I remember the clock one, but I don't even remember the rainbow one. Mm. All uh, I remember from the rainbow ones is there's clouds and there's rainbows connecting them and you get the flying. Maybe there's a lot of flying. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's a lot of flying in that one. Um, but, yeah, so that's been fun. I, I popped out. Well, you know, what? I actually just remembered. I, for some reason, was had an itch to play a little bit of Celeste. Oh, before nice. Armored Core came out the other day because I remember I beat I Love beat it Celeste. originally. Yeah, those. Those are very similar. 
Yeah, they're incredibly similar. Yes, absolutely. I think it was like the platforming. I was just like, oh, I'm playing yeah. Mario, and then I was just kind of like, I'm thinking of like what I'm gonna play next. Am I gonna am I gonna go to another Mario game? I, and I was kind of like, oh, I kind of just want to pop in Celeste. Um, that's that's just a really fun. That that's a the platforming that feels really good. Yeah, the platforming on there is like second to none kind of yeah gameplay feel. It's yeah. it's really I mean, yeah. It better be for a precision platformer. <laughs> it's precision it's feel, for yeah. sure. You know? yeah. And it's got like a it's got like a a, a nice story to it. You know, kind of like this girl who's going on this like kind of like pilgrimage so to speak to like find herself but then there's like all this stuff about, you know, feelings and and I don't want to go too far. I don't want to <laughs> I don't want right. I don't want I don't want to make finding yourself independent. independent you're talking about God. You're talking about talking uh, what about is our the... fem- feelings. Sounds Hellblade, great. right? You're yeah. talking about Hellblade. Yeah, Hell- <laughs> yes, Hellblade. What was the other it, one it, where it actually like does have a really back home and she oh, goes gone to the home? Attic. Yeah, gone home. Uh, uh, oh, oh sure. Yeah. Celeste so, so does have a really cool kind of like uh, so it's literally ver- gone home, Just dark version home. of yourself, kind of. Yeah, and it's yeah, yeah, which plays into the whole, you know. With the, the, the world and everything itself. I think that yeah. was nominated for like a when the games for Impact first started. So yeah, it was some, nominated for something huge. similar. That game was received extremely well. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sure it won awards. I'm sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's, it, that's yeah, that's not my awards. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag not my awards. Um, but yeah, so yeah, now I'm just gonna mainly focus on uh, Armored Core until Sea of Stars and. Yeah. Okay. Yep. See, you got two four. days. You're gonna beat Armor Core. Uh-huh. Two days. Well, I, I'm gonna be playing both because Armor. I think Armor Core will be a nice uh, compliment to to see a stars. You might cause... finish Armored Core this week if you get enough every time. Gonna... It's not super sure. long. Game. Yeah. Are you not gonna play Starfield at launch? Oh no, I'll definitely download it and play it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so is everybody yeah. playing Starfield like yeah. day one? Yeah. They're gonna start it. I like, mean, yeah. yeah. I don't That's know if the they're all getting thing, the yeah. uh, you know the early access, but I think most some of might us not are... be till next week. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm doing the early access. Me too. Yeah. I already, I already got it downloaded. Yep. Yeah. Um, a couple quick things for me, then we'll close out the show. I'll get the watch. Um, you'll you'll see me sporting that watch next. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. I forgot yeah. you got. The I can't wait. Watch. God, I hope it doesn't suck. I hope the watch I know. Suck. Otherwise, you're like, oh, oh I was so much money on that. They don't care. They'll give you something cheap. They don't That's care. True. Yes. Um, yeah. All right. So there was a another big update for Valheim called Hildir's Request, where you can mm-hmm. there's a new NPC that sells you stuff in the Meadowlands, and uh, it's pretty cool. Um, but if you play that game and, and like new content, added some new features to the building, which I think makes it a little bit easier to snap things together at weird angles. Um, like so you don't that. have to build yourself little platforms underneath to get the right angle to connect. Right, right. That is the main reason I don't play the game. No, I'm kidding. That's not it. <laughs> it's because it's at a weird angle. I love angle. building in that game. I love building I, in that game. It's, it's building probably my so favorite fun, building mechanic. Yeah. Uh, and I know, Dan, yeah. you've made some pretty creative stuff like up in the trees and it's stuff. So that would have been way easier with this new thing they added. But anyway. I built a treehouse, basically. <laughs> uh, you did build a giant treehouse. It's pretty cool. Um, Derek, I know you weren't on the show with us last week to talk about this, but I did start Baldur's Gate 3. I had some trouble with it because I had some corrupted files that were making textures mm. on certain characters look real bad. And so I was just like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. This is one of the ugliest games I've ever seen. And I kept like mm. I, I played on my Steam Deck and I was like, it looks really good on here. Like, it's you're right. It's a little fuzzy, right? It's 800 yeah, yeah. feet, but, but it looks pretty good. I was like, the characters look detailed. Long story short, I just had to like verify and reinstall like 12 gig worth of files that for some reason were corrupted on my version of the install. Oh, okay. And it totally fine. Works great. Love it. I'm not super far into it. Maybe five or six hours of actual playtime. Oh, that's uh, more than I, I, I thought. Okay. Because I got cool. stuck uh, at, on a fight. I'm pl- I played it on normal like an idiot. And so I think I'm going to bump it down to easy because I got I've gotten wiped like four times and I was getting really frustrated. Uh, it's like going to get don't... worse. I know. I was <laughs> early in the game and I'm like. This yeah. can't be this hard, and it turns out it actually is. Yeah, actually, really. Is. <laughs> it actually it's, is. It's, it's no nonsense. <laughs> it doesn't care about anybody's feelings. It's like we're gonna. <laughs> well, I rolled through you. the first couple hours of fights. I was like, I am on a roll, and then as soon as I hit the first group that really outnumbered me, and they were using smart tactics, blowing up barrels by where I was trying to hide, all this kind of stuff, that I was like, well, there goes my healer. I'm screwed. <laughs> like, it was those kind of moments that I was like, dang it, this sucks. Uh. So anyway, I, I really feel like it, it's a it's a Tim game because it's like, oh, I love it. I love it. You'll love it. Yeah. And I will say that the the camp stuff is some of my favorite with character building. The idea of like you don't have to worry about combat or anything and you can walk around and talk to people. And that's where the relationship building happens. And, you know, you get to learn all kinds of lore and your character. Normandy moment. 
really nice. Uh, I think really... I feel also like it's going to be a good December game. Like something about that game feels like a good cozy December game for some oh, reason. I can see too. myself getting caught up on yeah, yeah. on that game. Are you, but it's are season. you buying that one, Dan? Uh, I forget if I do have it pre-ordered, but I I, I absolutely I know you want were excited it. for it, but that doesn't yeah. mean you were going to buy it right away. No, I'm, de- I'm I don't know if I'm gonna. I'm probably not going to buy it right away just because again it's a you'll be playing so many games at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. This is a shit show, yeah. But yeah. um, I absolutely want to play. Maybe it. once you finish Actually, Spider-Man Two, you'll dive into it. Yeah, I, I don't sure. think you have it pre-ordered because I think it's digital only on PS Five. I don't think you can pre-order oh, at okay. GameStop really? unless you buy a digital version. That's that's annoying. Okay. I did um, not know. Is it though? It is. <laughs> I want not. my physical media. He, damn he it. likes his physical yeah. copy. But I am man. liking it, and I'll an say man. even like even like I say uh, that as a Blu-ray collector. But okay, <laughs> the my <laughs> the relationship conversations, even with Shadowheart early on, as I'm chatting with her, like that voice actress and the way they've done mocap and all that stuff, like it's very convincing that this is someone who has all this nuance to her character, and what you say mm-hmm. makes her like it's just really. It's just really well done. The storytelling and character development is really excellent. And then playing a ton of Tears of the Kingdom. I honestly think right now there, there's like a six-way tie with what's my actual favorite game this year. I <laughs> sure. don't know. I yeah. don't know. But I love that problem because I have so enjoyed the new games this year. There's so Obviously, many- Bramble's up there for you. Uh, Bramble's of right up there. And Planet right- of Lana, obviously. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Tax but, evasion, uh, whatever. So in Tears of the Kingdom, I've I've finished the uh, the Wind Temple. I finished the Fire Temple. I'm getting close to starting the Water Temple. But I'm just exploring a ton, tons of depths explore exploration, which is awesome. The use of lighting down there is how so is looking. the Switch doing this? It's so pretty looking in the uh, darkness somehow. Like it's really cool, and um, all the new weapons that you can kind of learn how to fuse. I've been lo- using a bunch of guides to try to like find unique weapon types and and all that it's it's just so so fun and then doing the cooking doing those recipes also using the camera to like fill up your compendium almost pokemon style like collecting and making sure you you um uh catalog like everything that's in the world so they give you all these different ways that if you want to you can explore every corner but you don't have to so right i don't know, man it's it's really good and so it's just been a blast my my son and i will sometimes uh, like he'll, he'll be sitting playing on his switch i'm sitting beside him playing mine and sometimes we'll even swap to look through inventories like oh you've where did you find that weapon like and then we'll switch back to like we're just kind of playing together while doing our own separate saves and so that's just been a fun and he's way ahead of me he's already finished the four main temples Pro uh, gamer Pro gamer he's way ahead of me um but every once in a while if i find something he hasn't found yet i'm like yeah don't worry about it your dad's pretty cool fun. <laughs> <laughs> be smug dad smug dag love it so, so no, it's been a, it's been a blast. I think that one probably has like I have feel more connected to because of what Derek said earlier. I've just been playing that one alongside with my son. So that just feels like I feel much more mm-hmm. personally attached to that one than mm-hmm. any of the other games I played this year. But that's super anecdotal, personal, just for me. That's not necessarily how everyone's going to feel. When well, I mean, and the game's absolutely amazing. Like, Dude, it's yeah. a magical experience. For an overrated game, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How were those first 30 minutes, Jeff? Why don't you tell us about those? <laughs> I don't think it's overrated. I'm just repeating some <laughs> no, no, Jeff's <laughs> boundary. From Someone needs to be brave enough to say <laughs> it. It's, it's not, not 60 overrated. frames per second, so it's obviously trash. You know? uh, um, it's yeah. true. But there so are I wanna, times I, I want to I... ask for... Uh, yeah. Go ahead, sorry. I was just going to say there are times when you launch up into the sky from one of those towers and you can just see <clears> this entire world somehow... You can see it at incredible distances and all the sky islands and mm-hmm. you can like zoom in with your little essentially switch is what you have as your device mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. and like mark things on the map. And and dude, I I don't know how this game runs on the switch. I really don't. Looking at um, you, Pokemon. <laughs> I, I don't. No kidding. As somebody who's been playing a lot of Pokemon did you, lately, what are, the F? <laughs> did yeah, you get the, the Master shot. Sword? Uh, no, I was looking up some good ways, like the good best timing. There's certain quests that people recommend just story wise and lore wise. It's more fun if you build up to that moment with these quests that uh, you can accomplish after well, certain yes. temples. <clears throat> I'm sure it's still fine either way. I just yeah, like, okay, I'll really do it that cool. way. So I just kind of follow this generic guide of like, do these temples in this order and then go do the master sword quest. And there these side quests will lead you up to it. So I'm just, I'm just going to do it that way. Okay. Uh, but yeah. I was just curious because I wanted your take on like, I'm not going to spoil it, but the whole it's the best, that, ma- it's that the best master there. sword retrieval ever yeah. for sure. It's, it's I can't very, wait. Very cool. Yeah, I can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> for sure. Um, so yeah, 
I totally oh. agree. It's the same. It's it's so great. <laughs> right. That's all I've got, though. Jeff, you were going to say something. I don't know if it... something unrelated to Zelda, but if you, yeah, ha- if you had it, a... okay. Uh, do you still have Fight Forever installed? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you know about the Stadium Stampede update being just live now? You, you told me about it, and so I've just yeah. I had the download start. I forgot to play it before the podcast, but it's like it's the battle royale mode where it's like play twenty it. something, thirty yeah. uh, thirty wrestlers in one stadium, and the whole stadium all is yours. At five frames per and, second. And <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pretty you much 45 and minutes for the lobby actually, to fill you know up. what that's the thing uh is uh, i've been looking at the uh it's probably because of the low player count but i've been looking at the reddit for this game and and nobody's reporting any technical issues which is crazy to me um but it's mm. probably because of low player count but uh i think it's really cool because it's it goes by health bar so like once your health bar is completely depleted you're out there's no pinning or whatever um so eventually it goes down to three when it's down to the final three you're in this really really small circle like really really <laughs> tiny one and if you get knocked out your health bar starts going down a little bit and you have sure. to get back in sure. so it's oh, that's that's like like a real battle royale yeah. exactly like Fortnite, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's like... the last man standing right there it's, it's awesome. it, but Which... starting out the whole stadium's yours the conclave included drive around with a golf cart or the, oh or the horse it sounds like it's freaking. What's stopping you from just standing there and taunting, getting your special meter? Yeah, just standing just... up in the bleachers and going, ooh, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doing whatever, and then just going down and like stone cold stunnering everybody. You know? <laughs> I used to uh, love creating characters in No Mercy that had just the dumbest uh, finishing move because it was yeah. so fun to defeat someone yeah. with like a little like eye poke or something like that, and then they yeah, yeah. Gosh. There was a there was a point in the WWE games. I think it's still like this when you create a finisher, you can create it with like up to ten steps. And sometimes I would have them, I think I might have explained this before, sometimes I would have them move wrestlers around pointlessly. Like, okay, you lift them up, and they're standing up, and they're on the shoulders, now they're off your shoulders. Okay, now they're now they're on your knees, okay, now they're not on your and knees. And the crowd's now going wild. And, and the crowd's losing it, and it's, like the, it's the dumbest He's non-fiction. gearing up for it. And then I gear up, and the final move is a slap or something yeah, like that. It's yeah. something stupid, like, yeah. It's a big, dumb slap. <laughs> and you pin them, and it's like a comical ending to the match, yeah. A oh, Hulk man. Hogan backhand, right? Yeah, exactly. Let me tell you something about slapping, dude. All right, guys. I think that's it, unless I'm missing something. Anybody else going? Oh, going? Uh, Fortnite new season. I mean, no, stop. Speaking of, on, <laughs> cut it out. Speaking of Fort- hold on, hold on. But real stop. quick, though, three hours in, and this guy. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Fortnite. Real quick though, that that kid that does the whole like that thing, he's a character no in, in Fortnite. No one knows who you're talking that, about. The black kid that when somebody's doing something stupid, and then it shows him like, oh, kinda the go- dude from TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. and he does that thing where he's kind of like. Like that, he's he's, he's in Fortnite. Is that what he does? Wow. The whole time. I mean, that's just the thing shot. that needs to happen. Apparently. I only know about the like, new Fortnite season because my son texted me from school saying, "Dad, can you go turn on my Switch and start the update for Fortnite so it's ready when I get home?" <laughs> and then like, Tim said, "I'm abandoning you." Aww, as well. That sounds like Eli. Who will text I'm me my child. Good. I need you to do this for FIFA so I get these yeah. players. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm not, I'm not doing <laughs> not, it. So I did try to say, I was like, hey, you should be focusing on school. Like, don't text me right. about video games right now. And then right. I was like, but I did start the download for you. You're fine. Like, <laughs> uh, good dad. Good dad. Um, that's a good That's a good dad move right dad there. Uh, I have to touch base also on current cinema before we head out. Uh, and I know it's super late in the episode and anybody right. that's listening will have it's checked out. Show. By now. That's fine. That's fine. But uh, uh, upon request, which is we greatly appreciate the request and can't believe people are listening. Uh, Kyle and I are working out the logistics of coming back for more current cinema episodes. Current cinema. They won't be like super long. Like they'll be way shorter than what they usually are. Like they'll be like kind of like mini episodes of like just catching up on what we watched this summer that were huge movies, yeah. stuff like yeah. that. So sure. Uh, I'd like to be on that since I watched a lot of movies. You did you watch did. a lot of the movies. Yeah. yeah. I watched like two. So I'll be on there for two minutes. That's all I get. You, you watch Mission out. Impossible? We're going to do Tom, Mission Impossible. Tom, one. Tom Hanks, or Tom Hanks. Tom Cruise Tim looks young, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I've watched like three <coughs> summer movies, maybe, which I is more than I usually watch. I a spot just because I'm going to go see Gran Turismo. Yeah, that's true. true. We're not going to talk Gran's, about that. We're definitely not going to talk about that. actually pronounced Turismo, so you're all fake fans. <laughs> Turismo. Nope. By, by the way, uh, always, a knock, a knock I have against that game, the intro is way too long and unskippable. I what the hell is that? The when you start the game up, it's like a 16 minute long intro. Game? Yeah, dude, you settle <laughs> for Gran in, Turismo. Dude. It's uh, a celebration about cars, man. You settle no, in. No, if you right, ship it. Like, if you, you can't celebrate that, you shouldn't be able to play. It didn't yeah, skip if, for me. If you don't like cars, then you play a different game. I think the game. first time <laughs> you have to watch it, I think after that you can skip it, if oh, I remember okay. correctly. Okay. Oh, I was still kind of like... But I don't, I don't sit through a long thing. I don't remember. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening and watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. A lot of Starfield and Sea of Stars talk next week, so buckle up. We'll see you then. Peace.